Project Camelot. Hi everyone, this is Carrie Cassidy from Project Camelot and we're going to go live just shortly here actually and be talking to Miles Johnston in the UK who is being interviewed in respect to the new breaking news from Max Spears' mother uh, reporting that he texted her right before he died that he felt he might die uh, might be killed and that she should investigate. She's gone on the uh, the news and this is getting picked up by all the major news outlets. So this is now mainstream and uh, it's very important information because it does substantiate what Project Camelot had reported when he died. I was already, uh, I did went live with Miles if you remember uh, because actually his death happened during one of my conferences and Miles was speaking. He was in direct touch with the woman, uh, Monica, who is a journalist, uh, a Polish journalist in Poland, who uh, I guess Max Spears was staying at her mansion. Uh, she owns several magazines, I'm told, and uh, he died there on her couch. And this was around... July uh, 17th, I believe. Uh, we heard about it that night because Miles Johnson was in direct touch again with her and with a couple of the people that were in, um, in attendance at the house. So we're gonna have Miles join us just shortly. Uh, I have a lot of details about the latest news articles and links to them in case you haven't been able to uh, pick up these information you know, various uh, news outlets, Huffington Post. Um, I've got a whole long list of actual news outlets that are putting all of this out. The Huffington Post, The Mirror, The Metro, The Guardian, The Inquisitor, The Express, The Sun, The Independent, Daily Mail, and The Telegraph, and The Guardian. And thank you to The Guardian for actually putting my name on my quote instead of calling me a uh, the Project Camelot blogger, which was a, rather a strange title, wondering why they actually weren't able to see who runs Project Camelot. And if they're quoting me, they should be quoting me directly. So this is what's going on. Uh, like I said, we're going to go live very shortly with uh, Miles Johnston and put this information out there. A lot of the articles apparently are getting the information wrong. Miles Johnson and I were investigating right after the death. And, uh, and this is important, uh, contrary to, to what some um, sort of, uh, I guess, demented individuals are saying. This is not about self-promotion. This is about getting the truth out. And it's so vital that alternative journalists like myself and Miles Johnston, who have the truth, who are uh, investigating. I spoke to a filmmaker who was in direct touch during the time when, my, um, when Max was dying uh, with the household. And uh, we had an extensive and long conversation just after uh, Max's death. I know a number of things that have been not, re not been released to the press. And I can say that uh, this information from his mother is simply substantiating what I said uh, going out on a limb right after Max died based on my investigation and conversations with, for one thing, the filmmaker who was again in direct touch with one party who has not been reported um, by name, but who was in attendance at the house when Max died and witnessed this. Uh, I don't know what's going on with Monica who owns the house uh, where Max died and who had traveled just prior to that uh, with Max to an island. Uh, and I believe that island was Crete, but I need to get some uh, some validation of that from Miles Johnston. So as soon as we can get him on the show, uh, we're waiting here for him to show up. Um, we have invited Max's mother, Vanessa, to come on the show to report in more extensive detail 
what she believes might have happened to her son. I have some other back channel information uh, that I may or may not be able to report here. And um, we'll see. I have put a call into another party who is knowledgeable about the occult background to this possible hit on Max Spears. And it is important to understand that we've got um, a lot of black magicians working behind the scenes. They were uh, intimidating Max. Max was drugged. There is a film on the internet, on YouTube, I believe it's still there, by the filmmaker again, who had been in direct touch with the household when these things were happening. And this is again around July 17th, uh, just lately, this last July. This is of course, uh, actually, I think that makes it three months later, um, you know, August, September, October. Um, and we're just about on the 17th, if I have to actually look at the date, yes. It's very strange. This is another occult synchronicity, no doubt, that all of this is breaking today, exactly three months after the fact. It is at least something that the mainstream press is picking up on it. Uh, they are reporting it wrong. They have many of their details wrong. Some one might say purposely wrong. They quote me without attributing the quote to me. I'm being quoted in almost every article. What they're calling me is a Project Camelot blogger. Not sure how they got the quote without going to my website and or watching my broadcast. So clearly my name was in evidence there. Um, when you quote someone in a news article, generally you try to use their name. And this is a part of a cover up. And so this is not ego. This is about how the mainstream press deals with trying to cover up uh, people that are making a difference uh, by misquoting them and or by not using their names. I've had this happen to me before with Veterans Today, for example. And I was actually told behind the scenes that Veterans Today um, have been told to take my name off an article that they published because they were not allowed to put my name uh, out there in public. This is all about uh, keeping information away from the people. So uh, it is good that they did quote me accurately. However, it's not, it would be nice if they used my name. The Guardian did so, that's very good. At this point, again, what we're reporting is Max Spears' mother having come forward to report that he sent her a text right before he died saying, uh, in essence, and I'm paraphrasing, your boy is in trouble. If I die, please investigate. So that is what his mother is now doing. She is, uh, is, is going public. And uh, this is, is, is very good news for us and um, very good news for Max Spears and all the people that care so deeply about him. Uh, he was a uh, super soldier, as we call them. He was interviewed by me initially uh, alongside Michael Prince at the Super Soldier Conference in California back in 2013. After that, he apparently went off on his own and started uh, reporting information about the UFO scene, about uh, conspiracies, about information that he had come across in his life and doing a very good job of it actually. So, uh, so he, his death was a great loss to the community and it has been completely ignored since the date of his death, which is in around, um, I don't have the exact date in front of me, but I believe it's around July 17th. So um, I'd have to see a calendar to get uh, all the details. This has all happened very recently um, in the last few hours that I was made aware of this breaking news and I am now going live with this broadcast and we have invited um, actually more than one person. We did invite Vanessa to come on the news uh, on this show and uh, we invited Miles Johnston. We are waiting for him to join us and uh, we will go live as soon as he is able to do so. 
In the meantime, I can tell you that uh, there is a, as I said, a a film of Max uh, two days, I believe, on the Friday. I think he died on, well, I became aware of his death. I think it was on a Sunday. I was at my conference in London and we were, uh, we had just closed down for the evening. Miles Johnston received a text and or a phone call. At that time, he was riding a train going home from having spoken at my conference. And he quickly texted me to make me aware of what had happened. I actually didn't even believe it at first uh, because of course, Max Spears being so young and I was not aware of a reason for taking him out for people, um, what I would call the usual suspects wanting to kill him, but apparently there was reasons. Um, immediately, we started to investigate. Um, Miles was in touch with Monica and some another party at the house, I believe. I, as I say, got in touch about a day or two later with the filmmaker who shot the last video of Max before he died. Um, in that video, you can see that he was actually um, drugged and he was having a very hard time with it. Um, what he was drugged with, I don't know. Uh, I do know he was in essence going in and out of consciousness and he went uh, notably at one point out apparently in the backyard to jump on a trampoline to try to get his head clear. That was one thing that went on. Uh, there was was actually more than one interview right before he died uh, because he had just returned from a trip in which he had, um, had, had some interesting experiences and there was actually a broadcast live from that island. Um, and I believe Monica was in attendance with Max traveling with him. Um, and so on. Now I have been offered an interview with uh, someone who is associated with Max, but that person had um, what we call conditions. And I don't operate that way. Um, I don't operate under conditions that have to do with, um, you know, barring me from interviewing other people or things that I don't feel are um, on the up and up and so on. So I denied that. Um, I actually refused that interview. Um, I encouraged that person basically to go forward on their own. I don't think they have, but I could be mistaken as I don't see everything on YouTube. And so I don't necessarily know what happened with all of that. But I can tell you there are plenty of people relatively close to Max who uh, do know things about what was going on. I have had, even recently, a behind the scenes report about a certain black magician who's working um, within the alternative community at this time and may have played a role in, this, in his death. Uh, and at this time, um, I won't be naming names, but uh, I think if you do some investigation, you're gonna know who exactly who I'm talking about. So this is what we've got going on. Uh, the reason I'm doing this broadcast now and the reason I've, I've contacted uh, Miles, who just got off BBC radio from what I understand, um, and also another broadcast I think that he was doing with regard to Stonehenge. Um, and it's quite late in the UK as you can appreciate. So I think um, it looks like Miles is just joining us now. So hold on one second. Hi, Miles. Hello, how are you doing? Very well. Uh, I've got, I am already live. So what I'm going to do is put, okay. you, put you on the screen. I don't know if you have video. If you do, that do would be- video. I'm probably wearing two sets of headphones right now. <laughs> okay. I've got one set for this thing and the other set for, I suppose I better turn some light on here because it's uh, almost, uh, anyway, okay. All right, well, right now you are, uh, your, your picture on your um, Skype, I guess it's, it says energy. <laughs> and, uh, and that's what we're seeing. That's what my audience is seeing. Uh, this is Miles Johnston. He is a well-known 
a British broadcaster actually, and uh, a reporter investigator. And he also is the person who puts on uh, the, uh, well, it's, it's yearly, actually several times during, a, during the year, a, what, we, what he calls the basis conferences. And I have been uh, in attendance as well as spoken at several of those conferences. Um, they are wonderful conferences. I, I highly recommend them. And it's great, Miles, to have you here. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic as well. And, and this is a very important time uh, for investigating and for getting the truth out about the death of Max Spears. Uh, so I, I appreciate that it's quite late where you are. I hope everyone will appreciate that, that uh, we are keeping you up late uh, in order to get, in essence, what is breaking news about Max's mother coming forward. I know you've been in touch with her. So I wanted you to... Okay, Perry, well, the situation is that since the day that I was at your conference and I got the, uh, okay, it's coming up to uh, 2.23 in the morning, there's a possibility I'll have a bookings clash. Uh, but the bottom, the, I'm sorry, I'm having to wear headphones here. <clears throat> so I've always been in consultation with Vanessa on this. Now Vanessa is uh, Carrie's mother. Um, wait, mother. not not my Sorry, mother. Forgive me, forgive me for a couple of slips here because it's just been flat out. Uh, I've probably the most important thing. Okay, right, guys. We live in a little bubble called the conspiracy movement, and we think we're very important, and we probably are. And Carrie, you're very important, and I'm very important, but. What I did today was, I'm an ex-BBC employee. I was fired. Oh God, it's so painful. I have to put some mockery into this because it's too serious. I was fired by the BBC. Uh, I was rehired by the BBC to close down BBC Manchester. Now that's because they're having sort of some kind of poetic games with me a couple of years ago. Uh, what happened was that the BBC moved from London, they moved a lot of the programmes from London to a place called Salford. Now Salford's important because it's the home of Manchester uh, United. Um, they gave me the opportunity to me metaphorically close down and shut down BBC Manchester, the entire northern region of the BBC. Now, we all know what sort of games these people play. So here am I. I'm the last person on shift to actually shut down the BBC. Right? In Manchester. That's the whole north region of the BBC. They also put me, as a bit of a laugh, on uh, the night of the celebration, or not the celebration, of 9-11. The, of Technically, I could have put loose change on a DVD and networked it to the entire northern region of Great Britain. That would have been a very nice thing to do, but it would have been very, very naughty. I didn't do that, but they put me in that position. This afternoon, I recorded, this is very important, folks, in the scale of um, what's allowed, what is vetted, uh, if, if guys could understand that Jimmy Savile, the paedophile, the guy who got the children for the elite, was the prime face on BBC popular music on top of the pops from the dead open until it closed. This is something that was sanctioned at the highest level. And he was sat in the chair with a... Um, I'm trying to get people's idea of what's sanctioned, what is allowed, what is allowed to go on broadcast television on the BBC, okay? He had a jacket on, which had lots of bits of newspaper clippings and things like that. Now, what he had was in words and letters, 
the date of his left breast of the time when after his death the BBC would announce an inquiry into what went on with Jimmy Savile this is shocking and terrible so about a year and a half before Jimmy Savile actually died he mocked everybody by saying that's when you're going to do an inquiry about me because I'm such a terrible person. He was laughing at us, knowing he was going to die or be dead. And he would, after his death, the BBC would then announce an inquiry, which means the BBC was announcing the play. Can you follow me here? Yes, ab absolutely. What they're basically doing is saying they know all about him they allowed him to operate under their banner for God knows how many years. 40 odd years. Okay. Uh, and basically this is a, a pedophile ring. So this is what the BBC has been affiliated with. Now you were just interviewed, were you not, on BBC radio? Was that? This is exactly the point. This is exactly the point. Right. I go into BBC Wiltshire, which is, I'm in uh, Devices, I'm in Wiltshire. It's. Uh, about a hundred miles from Simp from London, and I'm an ex BBC employee. I have been fired because I put on. Well, I sort of sort of sneaked on a 1.2 million watt FM pirate radio signal whilst I was sort of like still working with the BBC. You know, like you don't sort of do that sort of thing. It's like you don't do that. You get a thing called be fired. The pain, Kerry, that I had to go through to do this sacrifice. Uh, I'm so okay, I, you know, and I don't mean to rush you, but people are going to be very anxious to talk about today. Talk right. about what happened. Yes. Okay. What I did today was a straightforward, simple hello. Um, they called me, and I and okay, right? Can you do something about Max Spears? It's all over the Daily Telegraph. Now it's very important that. The Daily Telegraph, and they reported what the Daily Telegraph. Daily Telegraph is one of the premier broadsheet elite, absolutely accurate newspapers you can get in print journalism. And they deliberately got dates wrong here. Now people are going to have to look at these dates. They're going to have to look at exactly what was said here, because um, uh, Max went there in April. They deliberately confused my conference in the, the end of July with the actual conference he attended in April. So uh, they even um, online with the Daily Mail even used the poster for my conference at the end at the end of um, at early early August. So uh, <laughs> because we're dealing with the live situation here, we have a deliberate confusion between a conference in, in Warsaw in April and my conference in August that you were so gracefully able to transmit the last couple of hours with. That's uh, right. Now the, point, now the point is, you can go on live radio and you can say something uh, shocking and, uh, oh, I got away with it today, I was able to say something shocking. But I was recorded this afternoon for 10 minutes for the premier afternoon drive talk radio show called uh, on BBC Radio 4 which is their their global network uh, talk radio station knowing what I've done knowing I'm a pirate knowing the whole deal I've been on a number of other media the BBC doesn't mess about with this stuff that's what I'm talking about here they don't mess about now um, so what did you report did you report about Max's mother's statement. I talked about Max's death and I discussed it for 10 minutes who had killed him, why he was reanimated, how they, I also discussed John Irwin and how John Irwin's fundamental military training involved control after death. The whole point about John Irwin's book is One Step Beyond. I actually described that. The whole point of the title is 
one step beyond death. Now, on Max's final, shall we say, interview, he describes, uh, that's the Polish interview. Now, the Poles have put this out. Right. Okay, the, this is broadcast. These people are demonstrating. They're flaunting. They're saying, this is what we can do. We've got Max Spears. We have got him. This is what we are doing to him. Now, analysts have looked at this very carefully. And what they're saying, as far as Max Spears is concerned, is this is how we're going to kill you. This is how we're going to extract your soul energy or your esoteric energy, whatever you want to put the name on. And this is how we're going to do it. We're going to do it this way. And this is what the mechanism is. And, and Max accepts that. The so-called final interview with Max Spears, as Max Spears actually saying, yes, I left my body, I was gone, I left my consciousness, left my body. He died. And then, it, because this is too terrible to watch, it's too shocking to watch, the Poles choose not to show him on camera for that. Then, possibly at least a day later, Max is back, and he's, Max, he's, he's a lot more energized, and he's a lot more uh, coherent. And then they show him bouncing up and down on a bloody trampoline. Now, this is when Max is declared off camera, because it's too shocking and terrible, that his state, the way he looks is so shocking, um, that um, I've left my body, my consciousness left, and then they then talk to a much more animated, much more um, uh, aggressively intelligent and coherent put together person. Yeah, yeah, I've left my body and I'm, I'm back, and and then you get him dancing on a bloody trampoline. This is a guy that's been throwing up black stuff from his stomach on every orifice, unquote Monica, right? But then they've got him dancing on top of a bloody trampoline. Right. Okay. Listen. Now the point. Of, the point about this is the BBC allowed me to talk about that. They allowed me to talk on a recorded and then re-edited for actual live broadcast the concept of activation and control after death and the weaponization of that. Okay. The BBC isn't messing about here. They've got me, a rogue BBC employee, talking about the weaponization of life after death. All right, they put fair that on enough. The air today. Now, now, the point of this is very important, Kerry. This is not something which has slipped through, it's a deliberate sure. statement. Now, if when the BBC makes a deliberate statement, we're talking about bravado. We're talking about, uh, in the same way that Max was displayed, hey, look what we can do to Max Spears, your, your secret super soldier. Right. They demonstrated it. Because you've got to understand that up until he had died, oh, it's too shocking. We can't show him. It's too shocking how he's, you know, the state he's in. But after he admits that he's left, and after they get something else in there, They show him dancing and, you know, on top of a bloody trampoline. This okay. is bravado. I, I hear you. Um, I, I just want to back up a little bit because a lot of people listening to this didn't necessarily see our broadcast, which was done literally uh, the next day, I believe. I yes. have it down uh, as July 18th, I think it was. And I think yeah. Max... I, I'm, At if, least if, you can get the bloody dates right. The Daily Telegraph or the BBC. I know. Can, well, no, we 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 did a live broadcast. You can't yes. hide that, okay? And I had yeah, you I on agree. the You're recording. But the point is that the research journalism and quality of journalism of British broadcasting decided not to get those figures right. Right. And that's well, what I want to point out. But wait a minute. I have These something to tell you here. I this is yeah. very interesting. It it appears that I ha don't have an actual calendar so i cannot verify this without the calendar but it does look like max died on or around july 17th okay uh well he was officially dead the 16th okay 
that was the date, that was a Saturday of your conference. Right. And remember, but remember, Kathy, Stan, uh, sorry, Kerry, Kathy Morgan. Yes. Who was your last speaker that day, reported to me that she saw Max in passing clouds that afternoon. Okay, well, in other words, an out of the body uh, travel. But, but what I want to say here is that actually today, this is important, is the 17th. This is the day when all of this is breaking and possibly yes. even yesterday, uh, because I think I've even, you know, as the d time well, difference. We're, eight, we're at right now, we're 18th of. of um, okay, of but October. in California, this is the 17th. It is exactly, uh, I believe, three months since he died that all of this is breaking out. And so yeah. this is no accident. I'm wondering, I want to talk about his mother and when, why she came forward at this time, how long, she, you know, she's known about the text since day one, uh, obviously after his death. And I, do you know, are you able to give us the backstory on what prompted her to come forward to the news for them finally to uh, report this? They ignored it when it happened. She has been telling, she, I have always been, except for the first time we did the broadcast, I've always been liaising with Vanessa. So there are things which I've been deliberately saying publicly, and we've had an interchange privately since day two, call it, okay? Right. Because the only time I was able to get hold of Vanessa was on day, well, one, when I did the fast blast. Vanessa then contacted me. I was able to explain to her that her son was dead. And that second call after that was to talk to Sarah Adams, who absolutely collapsed in tears when I took, explained that. That's the night when um, I traveled back by train from London from your conference. Yes. Because, uh, because, because your conference is so popular, I sold all of John Irwin's books. So I had to go back to get another batch of books. Right, because That's we, we continued the, uh, the next day. Yeah. Yes, and then and you th sent that to me. You let me know that night, uh, r right at that time you texted me. Um, but what I want to know is, uh, again, why did his mother come forward now uh, with this information? This hasn't happened now. She has been talking to the press. She's been trying to raise this for months. She has uh, been thwarted by the autopsy results. I explained to her that she's going to get two sets of autopsy results. I said there is no way that she is going to get, and there's not a chance in hell that any of the people involved with this in Poland, there's no way in hell that they are going to release anything logically based on what they've done to max there's not a chance in hell they're going to release any body that's going to any physical mannequin body that's going to have any evidence at all that's going to incriminate them it isn't going to happen now as of only a few days ago uh uh vanessa and i have been questioning that the whether the body that's in the morgue or what that they buried is actually max Okay, well, there was a very strange situation uh, the night he died uh, in which Monica would not allow the police and would not allow the, 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 uh, the doctor who pronounced him dead, by the way. Uh, he, no, she, would not allow the, she would not allow those people to take his body. His, his body remained at her house, and you're saying yes. it was reanimated. This is when it would have happened, you see, and this is this key. Is, yes, this is key, but this is exactly the point. For a couple of hours after your conference, and I got those text messages, I had a, a, a distraught Monica in tears and also Madeline, and I didn't speak to Madeline. Now, Madeline at this time must understand she is one of the co-organizers of the Polish conference. I got word from the other organizer, Danusha, or Danuta, uh, who, now, who lives in Austria, that uh, 
as long ago as the conference that conference finished, I got messages from her saying that Max had fallen into the company of bad people. At that time, Denisha had been accusing the individuals that she that he'd fallen in uh, into into the company of as being bad, dangerous individuals. So, for this period of time, I'm not surprised that things are going bad. But one of the last things that Max said to me, uh, and also one of the things that he said on the Christy Joanna Hart show, and remember, Christy Joanna Hart, a Fleet, a Fleet Street journalist, is being accused of being responsible for killing Max. Why? Exactly. Okay, She's what was the island that Max had just returned from? Uh, was it Crete? I think it's, no, it Crete. I think it could be Cyprus. Cyprus. Okay, you're right. I, I think, think it's it Cyprus. Cyprus. Yeah. Okay, so that's very important because he traveled there with Monica. He returned. He was only back at Monica's house for a couple days after Cyprus that he died. Yes. And that's when he spoke to me, and that's also when he spoke to, he gave that final message to Vanessa, that if anything happens to me, investigate it. Also, do not allow Sarah Adams to be involved. He specifically excluded Sarah. Now, whether, now Sarah is distraught about this, she's hurt, uh, and whatever other reasons, Max consciously made sure that a she wasn't to be involved with the conference my conference if anything should happen and uh, also his mother he explained to Vanessa don't let you know Sarah be involved All right. it, said, it's not yeah, out of the uh, question it's not out of the question that Max might have been trying to protect her yes absolutely absolutely yes because as of last Monday, we're talking about a week ago from now, when uh, I had been attacked uh, with some kind of vo uh, poison of some kind, when I landed at uh, Dublin Airport when I was doing this UFO investigation uh, with a very good bunch of people, met some very fine, very advanced thinking women in in Ireland, and also this this abductee called uh, Jerry Battles where a warning to humanity from the ETZ engaged that we are facing extinction. Now, when I landed, something very strange happened in that there were two older ladies. A, I was bumped up to priority seating. B, there were two older ladies. I noticed with these two women that they looked too old for the oldest that they were. That was a signature which I, I, I felt that was abnormal. Cutting a long story short, I then discovered that my laptop, which is in the overhead locker, had been interfered with. And my colleague, who's a founder member of the Irish UFO Research Centre, going back to the early 1970s, who's also ex-RAF, his father was ex-RAF in Dublin, that's ex-Royal Air Force in Dublin, Ireland, right? He and I agreed that my laptop bag had been interfered with in such a way that they wanted me to know they'd interfered with it. But the point was that in order for me to get to my laptop, I had to move a case, a, a bag of this other individual, these other women. Now, this other woman actually went when we landed to open up the overhead locker on the, on the plane. This guy actually slapped her wrist and pulled her arm away so that she would not open that overhead locker. I then you know, being the, chain, the English gentleman that I am, even though I am from Belfast, the point being that this individual was stopped from opening the overhead locker. I subsequently opened it instead. So I was manipulated into a situation where I lifted a bag and gave it to this, this younger man with the black hair. He took it by the handle and uh, that meant I had touched the bag. Uh, 36 hours later, I start to react very, very negatively, very aggressively with something, some kind of toxin. And when I finally came back to uh, London, which was only about 72 hours later, I came out with extremely toxic reaction to some kind of chemical or some kind of venom. Now, on that Monday, 
just before that, Karen McDonald, when I was speaking at the probe conference, did her thing with her computer, uh, and she determined that I'd been exposed to various forms of snake venom, and that, uh, okay, that's okay, I'd been exposed to something. But on the Monday, I got word it was actually from four sources, four independent sources, that, uh, that this was actually an intended assassination to put me off because I'd been talking about Max Spears. Right. Uh, okay. But again, can we get back to, to Vanessa? Because this is really important that her story, and I, you know, I'm sorry that it was so late when we found out about all of this, but to get her able to say her story, what she is told, uh, in essence, the mainstream stream press in Britain is that he texted her. She, she actually says yes. on the video, I'm not sure who shot that video with her. Uh, do you know? Uh, the video, uh, K, that's the one that's on the, the Daily Mail website. I guess. Uh, uh, it wasn't Taj. Taj has decided, has, uh, Tajinda uh, is an Indian gentleman. He appeared on one of the basis project, uh, Coronation Hall basis at the Barge events. That's when he first turned up. He, um, he's essentially, he, I, made, I made an administrator of the basis website the facebook site and a lot of people have been confusing him with with an official thing with with myself now taj has done an interview with with vanessa but that was done by somebody independent differently all right but in the interview she says that uh that basically she's very suspicious that she feels that max was killed that he was getting into as she put it some very dark stuff um, and there, there, she do, does seem to realize, I don't know about your personal conversations with her, that there is, uh, in essence, an occult side to this. Uh, this is way, let's, okay, right. Let's get way, absolutely away from the so-called satanic abuse occult stuff. This is a weaponization of advanced, highly technical and clever individuals for the ransom of Max's soul and his programming, the programming that was involved with his soul. Now, it's interesting that Tajinda was aware of the concept of a soul ransom. Okay, I'm right. not sure what you're talking about getting away from the occult because these, this is actually occult, everything no, to do the, with the, it. The occult thing has got a distraction value on this. Satanic occult, uh, brings in a whole pile of things which are incorrect. Well, I'm not so we sure about with, that. Uh, no, 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 actually knowing... Get into the technical aspects of a weaponization... Well, I appreciate of, that, of yes. But there is no, at least in my mind, there's no problem with the, uh, you know, with black magicians using a technical means. Uh, the, you know, the secret space okay, program right, is yes, full, right. even Richard Hoagland will admit, that NASA's uh, sorry, got a whole... Richard C. Hoagland? Yes is that NASA has a whole group of black magicians behind the scene. So none of this, we're talking going back to the days of Crowley and, uh, and, and more. So, so Parsons, okay, Jack Parsons. Right. Well, so this, this, of Alistair Crowley, if you get the into the technical. People, okay. Yes. Right. Listen, sorry. Uh, uh, we're going back to basis two here. An individual called Ron Adams was who lived at Crowley cottage was uh, dealing with this secondly he was given free access and very few people in the united states are going to know this he was given free access his entire family was given free access to, to aria bentwaters u.s air force bentwaters rendlesham forest okay right they were all multiple my labs and you're going to love this Kerry. right they were absolutely terrified of spiders right Okay, well, I appreciate that. You and know okay. you and I know exactly what where that's at, um, and other people have to hear our interviews uh, to in regard to the black spiders, of uh, what is in ex essence the matrix, the spiders of the matrix. So let's okay, let's not lose sight of the of the yeah. the, the task at hand because we want to make sure people don't. A lot of people don't understand the nuances. I get that. So yes. it is important. Yeah. There is a magician. 
that Max mentioned a number of times, which is Aquino, uh, that D Douglas Dietrich, in oh, my yeah. interview with yes. him years ago, yeah. spoke in detail about uh, Aquino. Um, yeah. And this no, does I, get I in. I did mention Aquino to the BBC. Now, the BBC is acutely embarrassed and aware of Jimmy Savile. And remember, James Casbolt, who I met in prison only a couple of days ago, James Casbolt is in the same jail that they had the Nazis in here during World War II, just down the road from here. Okay? <laughs> well, it, you know, that, that's coming what? full Barry circle. Barry King was involved there as well. All right, all right. Well, it's come full circle because on my interview with, with Michael Prince, James Casbolt, uh, that's the same person, by the way, uh, he was reporting... Uh, that he was proud to be a Nazi and he was proud to be hired by the Fourth Reich in the United States to work for them just prior to when he went off the rails and uh, got jailed, etc. So all of this kind of uh, does seem to to be coming back home. So this is all in you know interwoven. So you've got the Nazis, you've got the present day Nazis, you've got NASA, you've got high technology, you've got what is in essence black magic and high technology masquerading as black magic and the vice versa on that. Yes, it's important to understand, folks, that this idea of masquerading and this. Right. Now, so, there's a new kid on the block here. All right. And this new kid on the block called Alex, a young man who's about 25 but looks about 15, he insisted he was channeling the Fourth Reich. Right. When I talked to James only a couple of days ago, when I said that, he just immediately shut that down. The Fourth Reich surrendered. They shut down about two years ago. Uh, they don't even they even switch uniforms. He explained that they now wear blue uniforms. I don't care what kind of uniform they 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 wear. Okay. Yeah. So he uh, we we have a new whistleblower, uh, a William Tompkins, who who is basically an aerospace executive for Douglas aerospace and also in association with the Rand Institute, having top level clearances, being responsible for building underground bases, designing them and working with the secret space programs. He's 90 years old. He's got impeccable credentials coming forward and freely admitting that the Nazis were working with the reptilians. And so none of this, you know, I don't, I'm, I don't know what this young man is, is really on about, but uniform does not matter. Let's get no, down that was, to no, no, it. No, that was purely uh, James saying that the Fourth Reich ended. <laughs> the Fourth Reich is, 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 is alive and happy, and this is nonsense. So, okay. Oh, no, I'm okay. I'm just letting you know that. Yeah, no, James I appreciate said. that. I think and people was, need we to read Jim Myers' book. Under close surveillance. Okay. Let's, I still want to get back to Vanessa because this, I, I want this information out there. I want as much of, as what she had to say. We don't have her on hand. Um, I, I have an open invitation for her. Uh, uh, now, Je uh, she has been with, uh, all afternoon, she's been talking to people in the States. And I was reported to me that MSNBC were running a story on, on this uh, earlier today. Right. Okay, what about the journalist, Monica, who has... Uh, she's not who, a journalist, she's a publicist. <laughs> All right, my understanding is she is also a journalist, but uh, she so owns... Insofar as that she publicizes works, and uh, the photograph of her with Stuart Sverdlow and Max, I had in my PowerPoint presentation that I was delivering a week to uh, 10 days ago, uh, in a little conference called the Probe International Conference. Now, the Probe International Conference that, uh, is at St. Anne's on Sea, just south of Blackpool, right on the English West Coast. That's where uh, one lecturer called, um, um, he died on stage because he had got information about 9 11. Uh, his name escapes me, I'm being blocked on this, but. Um, well, are, you're not saying he just died on stage, stage. He literally died on stage, took a two or three breaths. Are you talking about a couple of days ago? No, no, this was about four or five years ago. Uh, All right, so you have a picture of Monica, the uh, publicist that, that Max was traveling with and had, had died on her couch. Is that correct? Yes. Now, the, 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 now the point is that... Um, 
I had a photograph, which is online, and uh, the Daily Mail who were with me talking this afternoon, the photograph was Stuart Sferglow, in the center, Max Spears, and Monica Duval was on my PowerPoint presentation that I was going to deliver at Pro. And when it came to the actual presentation, it wasn't there. Somebody had removed it. So there was an, uh, I don't understand how that happened, but I'm not surprised. But the, the point was that even when I tried to search for the photograph again, I couldn't find it. The guy in the Daily Mail this afternoon found it. But this, is a, this was a direct connection with Stuart Sverdlow, Max Spears, and Monica Duval. And Monica Duval was going to do an awful lot of publicity for my stuff, the basic project, trans translated into lots of different languages and have it on every kiosk and store all, all across Europe. Now, she, I feel, is being used here, and if anybody's going to be bumped off, she could be the next one. Because as of last Monday, which is a week ago, uh, I was told that the attempt, the poisoning that I, that I had in Dublin, wasn't the poisoning, it was an attempt of assassination. They wanted to bump me off. Now, secondly, the next person on this, and I got heavily criticized about mentioning this, was that Sarah Adams would be next, and she, the targeted dates of this would be sometime around October 29th. Now, on a completely different okay. level. Okay, let me just source. say, though, this is Max, purely it, speculation on your part. It, you know, well, it's not speculation. It's what's been reported to me by several different sources, including Simon Parks. All right, so Simon, it Simon has, Parks, has she been uh, warned? Has she been warned to be careful? Had, yes. Okay, because that's quite, you know, uh, concerning, obviously, to hear about in essence, you're saying that the Illuminati or uh, certain members of this group that have taken out Max Spears are now going to target. MI5 contacted Max uh, Simon Parks, and Simon Parks told me that the group that, were, that attacked me was a small, separate group of black magicians involving the Temple of Set. Right. Now, for, immediately, that's a whistleblow because there's not a chance. The individuals we're dealing with here, there is no way they are going to leave any traces that are going to come back to them. There is no way they're going to release a body which is going to have any kind of toxins in it to, to Monica or anybody else, which is why Monica, Monica did not identify Max's body in the, as it, when it came to UK. It was her daughter. And her daughter only identified Max through a veil. So the body that could have arrived here, we had a whole discussion about this, could be a complete, as we called it, a Paul McCartney, a replacement similar to Max. So that any evidence or any poisoning that was done to Max himself would not be revealed in an English autopsy. And that is exactly what's happened. There is nothing to show in the 28 samples that Monica has, not Monica, that uh, Vanessa has, of anything at all which is of wrongdoing, which is exactly as I told Vanessa. I told her there is no way that you are going to get any evidence on any obvious autopsy of any wrongdoing which is going to point to anybody in Warsaw. There is no way that having committed this crime that they are going to release anything to anybody that's going to pull any kind of blowback on these guys. The people that are going to get blowback are Stuart Sferglow and Monica Duval. Monica Duval is expendable because she is the woman that potentially was having an affair with Max. And there's not a chance in hell that Stuart Sferglow is going to have it. He's not, he's, no way he's going to get involved with a murder of somebody that's going to point back to him. So any... Any idea that Stuart Sferglow is in some mysterious way involved with bumping off Max Spears is lunacy. The man is not that stupid for Christ's sake. Right. Absolutely. And I, I don't I don't believe, regardless of what, what you agree or you don't agree, I don't believe that's that he is uh, going to be taking someone out. Even I, do, I believe he's a much better person than that. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yes. So so I say, think it is no, important. But, no, but, uh, on the night, on those brief moments, when I got off onto the train after I did the initial uh, Facebook fast blast, uh, I, 
appearing like and Vanessa or his, his Max is that's what I was asked to do literally minutes like 20 30 minutes after I got all these text messages uh, after after I talked at your conference right at passing clouds which interesting was raided soon after that and taken off that's exactly right yeah and it was very intriguing that I was able to be at the Eric von Daniken multi-million pound investment at BAFTA only on Saturday with with um, um, Jesus, what's a bloody name? Anyway. Um, okay. Uh, look, just to circle back a bit here, because people are listening and, and they will be, be a bit, con you know, confused. They're going to be confused. Yeah, I, I uh, you, you know, this is a, this is a rather story. complex story, to say the least. Now, I, I have a link to the interview that was done with Monica. Uh, I believe uh, you said her name is Madeline. Is that correct? Uh, Stuart it's Swordlow. Mad Madeline. Madeline Namro. Now, to give people the context here, Madeline Namro and Danusha, or Danuta, are the co-organizers of the conference. That was uh, the Polish conference. The Polish conference, right? Right. That's something they, he attended back in April. They split up very aggressively. Madeline decide, uh, picked up on the head of Ucash, that's um, Magnus Olsen, and they're ha now a couple, they're a pair. So the head of the European Committee Against Covert Harassment has linked up with the other girl in this conference. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, that's, I think maybe something we don't want to go into at this exact moment. I am putting into the chat so people can see that, that actually to see visually that uh, what Monica looks like, that you can see Stuart Swordlow and Max Spears. You can see Max Spears right. being interviewed mainly by two women in this video. Uh, it's right. in the two Polish. Women will be Madeline and Monica. Right. And it is and in have Polish. A background, okay, Emma? Right. It is in Polish. So it's, it's, um, I'm afraid, I, I think Max does speak in English, but they don't, they speak in Polish. So it's, it's somewhat yeah. confusing, but at least you can get a visual if you're interested, uh, on the history on this. Uh, I, I do appreciate you talking about all of this, about the reanimation. I'm wondering whether the mother, whether Vanessa, you must've talked to her about this. What does she think? Yes, we did. We both noticed it the same day. I was preparing my poly, I was preparing my presentation on the train up to up to Blackpool or St Anne's on Sea for the probe conference. Now the context of the probe conference is important because James Caswell people first appeared there, and because this little conference in a little seaside resort is usually got a few intelligence individuals there, and as I say, it was the. Uh, uh, was chosen to assassinate one speaker uh, by four or five years ago. Uh, okay. Uh, now I, I do see that it looks like Sarah is in the chat here. Uh, good. That's good. If if this is the Sarah that uh, is was Sarah associated Arms. with uh, Max Spears, you're welcome to come on the show. Just yeah, uh, Sarah had asked me to call her this evening, and I haven't been able to do that. I have been flat out. I've actually just delivered a presentation about two or three hours ago now uh, to the Wyvern Dowsers Association, totally packed out. Now these are a bunch of, uh, this is a very old uh, group which is dowsing in the whole area of Stonehenge, Avery, and is aware of much of the deeper meanings and energetics of Silvery Hill, Stonehenge, and also right. areas where there are, are various perceived and observed reptilian bases hidden within the hills of uh, what was popularly known as crop circle country. Yes, absolutely. Okay, very good. Well, I'll be very interested to see uh, whatever you filmed in that regard. Uh, so if uh, Sarah, again, would like to come on the show that we're doing right now, if she has Skype, uh, she's welcome to come on to my Skype. Now, we have to say, right, uh, if, uh, just to make it absolutely clear that uh, the audience should know that one of the last things which Max said to his mother was, if 
uh, if something does happen to me, make sure Sarah does not get involved. Now, there's two. Right. Now, also, the people have got to understand that just prior to uh, Max going to Poland, now we understand Max actually went to Poland earlier than the rest of the speakers. That's myself, Kieran Lee Perrin, and Magnus Olsen. And we had a lineup in Poland of the Polish, the American audience and the global audience got to understand that in Warsaw, you had an extremely well-educated, perceptive and intelligent, uh, very alert and aware. Uh, yes, uh, I have heard all, that. I audience, believe Max, okay? I believe that above was Max's anything, opinion. Above anything you will have seen in the United States or Britain, they really were alert. Now, another independent researcher who was in basis one and two, Lisa Williams, is aware as to why that should happen. And that is to do with the experiments and issues involved with World War II and the Nazis as to why that region should be available for those individuals to be so alert. And this is very important in terms of what was going on in World War II, which we got to understand focuses right back here in Britain, where James Casbolt is in a jail right now, where now we are now understanding that uh, Barry King, who started this whole thing and way back in the early 90s, is, there's a connection there, and that very jail had the Nazi prisoner of war people in it, right beside Britain's underground bases, where they have been developing program generated life forms, the non-human cyborg units, sure. independently, and in conjunction with the creation of Britain's National Health Service. Okay, that's another issue altogether. Let's move on. Okay. Uh, to get back again to this breaking news, which is, again, uh, you, you're saying that Vanessa has been trying to go to the press, that she was finally successful. Do you understand what it was, aside from the text, if anything, uh, was there no autopsy? Was there an autopsy and then it lied? This is the whole problem. There has been an autopsy on Max, but only a week ago when I was going to that probe conference that, that, that Vanessa was uh, concerned that it, it was Max or wasn't. There is uncertainty as to whether the body that has been made, uh, there's been an autopsy on and has long since been buried in a private blood linked attendance only, which is why Sarah was not invited to that burial. I, okay, I, I'm not I'm not understanding you. What has Sarah got to do with, what are you saying here? Why wasn't Sarah she? Is, Sarah has uh, become extremely agitated against me because I was verbalizing the demands by Max, via his mother, Vanessa, that Sarah should not be involved in my conference that Sarah should not be uh, involved or connected with anything to do with Max should he die. That was one of the last things he said. To right, his and again, and I, I, I just have to say, okay, I, I hear that and I understand we also had another person on our broadcast, uh, if you recall, who, who said something similar, um, you know, and I don't like- I think that was Sandra DeRoy. Yes, that's correct. Uh, uh, there's been a bitter, between those two right but rather than sort of air people's dirty laundry so to speak let's yeah. get down to why max would say that in other words what's the big deal as to whether someone's what involved or not involved uh we do know that uh from what i understand i believe sarah has some kind of super soldier background herself and this may be the caution uh, because super soldiers uh, can be infiltrated and, and handled very well. Uh, well, uh, I mean, uh, you were at the Super Soldier Summit 2, where you are at the Super Soldier Summit 1. Uh, I can't remember what which one you're talking. I I interviewed, uh, you know, as you may recall, Max Spears. and Well, that was Super Soldier Summit 2. Right. And, and that was the one that I, I was involved with live. I was meant to be in the first one. Well, you knew uh, that Michael Prince actually was basically in command, as he put it, of all the super soldiers at the conference. That's the way he yes, put it to and, me. Yes, and it's very important that observers should watch your interview with Max right. and, and James or, or Michael. Because well, because you can, you can see, see the body language. The way, 
yes, the, the, the body language. And when I now when I first when when Max and Sarah came to England, and I was there in Can in, in Broadstairs, uh, first of all Canterbury, we had at least six agents with us following us. Right. Max uh, deliberately, as a bit of sport, got rid of two on the basis that once you identify the agents, or once you identify them, they're no longer in the game, and they go, and, and that's it, game's up. And one of the individuals in that pair actually said, oh, well, hello, Miles, hope you know, okay, and then that was them. In other words, game over. So they, they then, and there were another two, and then on that day, uh, when we got to Broadstairs, uh, that was when uh, Max was finally triggered. One got through. There was an individual guy, bald-headed guy, walked around with his mobile phone, and he got a mess. He got one or two words into Max. That triggered him. And then Max then uh, started drinking immense amounts of extremely expensive old uh, brandy, I think it was, to the extent it was about six hours before I could actually talk to Max. And I did get an interview with him, two hours of an interview, where he said lots of extremely interesting things, but he is clearly drunk. Okay, and well, that, even that, so, that, sometimes that is, you, you know. Yeah, but that, that's an interview which is being forbidden for release. So, uh, and because it's in the public domain, it, is, it exists. Okay, what, what do you mean it's forbidden by who? Uh, it, was a, it was a personal agreement between me and Max that that would only ever be seen by uh, uh, a closed, extremely high level uh, of of individual who could understand it and who would be forbidden at pain of death of releasing to the public. Okay. So, so uh, that's well, it, I, I appreciate that. that. People who can understand the concept of involved. Right. All right. So, but as such, I have made a vow. I will not release that publicly. Okay. That's fair enough. Uh, so what we've got here is we've got his mother coming forward. Can you tell me if you feel that she has gained traction from the news service for a reason uh, at this time? Do you know what's going on with that? Uh, we've been working um, in a sort of a symbiotic situation because we're not always in touch. She's been getting her contact with the media all day. I've been getting my contact with the media all day, and we have yet to have a discussion about that. Okay. And we'd hoped that we'd hoped to have had that this evening before we did this. Uh, what we're doing now. Right. Okay. Uh, well, all I can say is, uh, Sarah, it has been invited on my show. Actually, she was invited in the past, and she's welcome to again Skype me. Yeah, well, I, I see I, that she's turned up live as being online uh, on my right. screen. Right. Anyway. Well, she's not on uh, my Skype yet, uh, so I don't see her here. But she's welcome to come on this show or another show in the future. Yeah, I, to I have to say that I've invited Monica Duval. Uh, I also to invited to Monica to her side of the story. I, I okay, why isn't me. Monica coming forward? Because I invited her the day after it happened uh, through this filmmaker. In fact, Monica was there on the phone listening to my conversation with the filmmaker, hearing everything I was saying, and they were discussing me uh, in another language as it happened, uh, and when I was on the phone with him. And she has been invited to come forward and tell the story. She was the person who was on hand when all of this happened, there is an unnecessary subterfuge in the fact that she has not come forward to tell the truth about what happened. Well, the problem is we don't really know who was there. Well, now, we do know that uh, we do know that Monica was there. Well, yeah, well, we know that Monica was there and we have to be very careful as to uh, he was there. It, why did she not? Uh, I mean, I've had a lot of text messages from Madeline this morning. And uh, to be perfectly frank, I explained, look, that everybody's really nice people. You know, Monica is an extremely delightful, intelligent, vibrant uh, woman. Uh, of, of uh, I mean, the last time I was speaking with her was we had a whole day together for on Sunday very 
very civilized, intelligent person. So what the hell's going on here, quite frankly? And what the hell's going on here is that in her charge, on in her house, she refused medical help to uh, a dying man. All right. Well, so, so what uh, the hell's we going do. On here do we here? know that to be the case? How do we know that that you know that statement? Do we know that Monica denied medical help? My understanding is that she tried to get medical help, and the doctor simply gave up and 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 decided that he was beyond help am i wrong well we have, we can only take their word for what was said here right the policeman according to vanessa the policeman who was subsequently sent to get uh uh max to hospital was refused and sent away and that policeman has suffered an accident and is not going to be available to talk to anybody for at least six months right uh well okay that was a strange happening and let me say that i did report this originally on our first broadcast right after it happened and i talked at length to the again the filmmaker who was on the phone talking to one of the people on, on so site talking about the bearded individual on the camera talking to him talking to max Yes, the person who filmed him. I had an extensive conversation I don't, I don't, with no, him. He's not the person who filmed him. He's the person who appeared um, on camera. Okay, it who was involved in the filming? Because how many people were physically there when Max is ill? Okay, but the, my point that I'm trying to make is that uh, there were witnesses to to Max's death that apparently there were two people, uh, at least two groups of people. One was the policeman, and I think there was more than one. And one was the doctor, and I believe there might have been more than one doctor. And both left Max's body at Monica's house. Now, this, this would never happen in America. You would no, never be able to pronounce somebody Monica's, dead and then leave. Word for this. I know, but the, the understanding is that she sent them away and that Max was pr pronounced dead. Nobody would leave a dead man behind. They simply would yes, not do it. Remember when I got on the train, Monica went from a state of despair to, well, something could be done. There's hope people were, quote, going to work on him for another two hours. Yet Madeline was saying, there's no hope he's he dead, dead. But then Man we're not even sure where Madeline was. She's now, at this stage, meant to be with Magnus Olsen in Sweden. My but understanding is Madeline was not, I was told she was not the per person at the house, the other woman. The other woman was a, a person who doesn't want to be identified. No, see, now we're interviewing, now we got another character. We're looking like we've got an extra four people standing here doing this. All right. Well, I mean, this is the kind of thing that goes on in, in any murder investigation. Uh, we need also th to get back to the fact that the mainstream press is getting a lot of their facts wrong. And, they're, they're, uh, they're, really, they're, not, they're not getting their facts wrong. They're making sure they're getting their facts wrong. All right. Fair enough. That's, that, that's, 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 a, that's, a, that's a blow horn. So we've got to look at the numbers they're coming up with, which means they're complicit with the cover-up and the murder. Okay. Now, at this because point, I no, do have no way, Sarah. There's no way... That, that, that there's no way the autopsy the max was not properly formally photographed when he arrived in the uk uh, there were no formal uh, uh public the normal uh things done and the bottom line to that is if he is part of a secret program and there are things which the various services want to maintain a, a private. There won't be. And that's what I told Vanessa. Any official autopsy that you get on this situation is going to come up with a blank. And that's exactly what's happened. And even, my, even at the BBC today, they agreed with that before we went on air. Now, the thing is that I told... Uh, Vanessa, if she's got to get anything, she's got to pay for an independent set of results that she gets privately, completely below the table. Now, 
The problem is there are people who are saying that Max has done a runner. For some reason or other, Max has had to disappear. So, uh, and this has to be said, because the evidence, the evidence for his death isn't there. Uh, first thing I spoke to a number of policemen is, that, where's the evidence? Where's, where is this? Where is it? It isn't, there is, it isn't there. Now, if Max has, uh, for one reason or another, had to, had to drop out of, drop out of uh, vision, uh, and adopt a situation, uh, do a Jim Morrison, shall we say? Right. Uh, then obviously his mother will be part of that and be, you know, want to carry things up. Which is why we're now getting a situation where a couple of days ago, uh, a document was received by Vanessa, uh, which was signed by by Max's lifelong partner. Monica Duval, who you know, knew Max all of about eight to ten, maybe sixteen weeks, basically saying that the autopsy has come up with no result. Uh, the case is going to be closed within seven days, and uh, the police authorities are saying, "If you want to keep this case open, you're going to, you're going to have to come up with the best part of a thousand dollars." I understand. Okay, so. But I, I am a little concerned about the reference of this publicist, Monica, whose house he was he was at, uh, suddenly being referred to as his partner, in other words, a romantic partner. Is that the idea? That it is understood. And remember, we have to put alleged here on everything, right? We are only going on our discussion based on what they have chosen to report back to us. You were not there. I was not there. I was only there for the, the for the second conference, and where Max, where Max was an extremely able command. He delivered he delivered a brilliant first time solo ever without Sarah uh, uh, speech, and answered lots of questions. And he was in full command of his senses and on top form. Monica expressly stated to me before we did that show that Max was clean, he was not on drugs, he was totally clean. And the autopsy results that we've been given, or that rather Vanessa's been given, show no sign of drugs in his system. Okay, well, he was clearly drugged if you watch him on, on the screen. That's what the autopsy results, 28 samples here in the UK are saying. Okay. Uh, that, that's why the question is, is the body here in the UK Max Spears? <laughs> of course, and that's Vanessa always going to be a great question. Expressed doubt on that. Yeah, and I, I don't blame her at all. Um, I, I do because think she did not identify the body. Her daughter did through a screen. What kind of a screen? What does that mean? Uh, she didn't get a direct view up close and personal. And then oh, oh, I said to okay. Monica, I, I, sorry, I said to Vanessa, if you want to check that this has been a body swap, there are certain features of a, a person you can't change. That, that you can get somebody who looks like somebody, somebody who has maybe changed or dehydrated or whatever, you know, they've changed their flesh level. There are certain characteristics. In other words, you do the old Paul McCartney checkup, which some individuals have suggested Paul McCartney, of course, ain't the one that started the Beatles. I understand. Uh, and, and, and this kind of thing is a problem because there is a lot of skepticism around this notion of clones, etc. Um, we have uh, well, many we witnesses. Well, we don't have to go so far as clones to have a body similar. Well, you can say I mean, clones, you can say androids, you can say, uh, you know, yeah, well, whatever. We can do that, but we don't have to go that far to just get a body double. I mean, uh, Kennedy, well, I perhaps, they, they, perhaps they, not. They, they I, I body think body swap for Kennedy uh, and this sort of thing. You know, it's okay, not. let me let me just clear something up really quick. Quickly, again, I've tried to type it into the chat again and again. If Sarah is listening and wants to come on the show, she is invited to this show or a future show. She has to Skype me at Snow Jaguar. It's very simple. If she wants to add me to her Skype and join the show, we can do that. If not. Uh, we can do it another time. Uh, so stop asking me to ask her to join. I've already done that 20 times. 
and uh, that's where it stands. So it's up to her to make the move. If she no, I, I, just just to put things in the confusion basket here. Right. The the one of the official murderers of uh, Max Spears is Christy Joanna Hart. Uh, she but you, off a rocker because well she has every right to be off a rocker that there are individuals blaming Christine Joanna Hart for murdering Max Spears and she's not happy about that and she's okay very but distressed. what is the point of that I mean seriously I agree what okay it's not based on anything real I, I agree but uh, uh, okay. she's, she's uh, why why are people do you know why she's being targeted. I don't know, but because she had an associate, uh, one of the one of the chief culprits of this uh, murder is the evil uh, General Aquino. You know, he's the man. He's the guy who who who, who killed Max. Well, some people are yeah. saying that we have no yeah. proof, of course. We don't have anything at all. Uh, Christine is saying, look, he's an old man. He's got nothing to do with this, and. Um, again, there's not a chance in hell that he, that somebody of that level would get involved with it, with a stupid murder like this. Perhaps not, uh, except that Max did mention him. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. You, if you want to give Max a little credit, uh, now if he was yeah, trying no, to throw yeah, the scent. I, I know, but the same with Ferdlow. If you're going to murder somebody, you don't get involved like that. It, it, it does ever. seem it does seem over the top, no doubt about it. Where, where he's simply been mentioned by Max before he died, very actually recently uh, before he died. So, yes, Max so, explained to me that he was being uh, waking up in the middle of the night or in the middle of the morning completely exhausted. He'd been on mission somewhere. He had been... Um, uh, engaged with some kind of warfare of some kind, some kind of battle, and uh, he, he mentioned Aquino in that in that in those. Yes. Okay. So he may be being targeted. Perhaps uh, that was simply a name he was using. As uh, Douglas Dietrich will tell you, that there is a whole group of black magicians, not just one. So. Well, um, that's when I mentioned that my potential okay, target. Okay, I am being told that Sarah is trying to call me. However, I do not have any evidence of any Sarah on my Skype. So at the well, moment, so I've got... I had a Sarah coming up on my thing here, but... Um, okay, well, calling you isn't really going to bring her on this broadcast very conveniently, I don't think. I think we're going to have some... I concur. Uh, so... I see that people are trying to get me to to get them on the show, but I'm not going to bring you on unless you really are Sarah. So bearing in mind, bearing in mind that for observers and your thing, uh, I'm on air with a different station in 15 minutes. Okay. Well, regardless, we can even uh, continue yeah, can with her. Just, yeah. um, but uh, all I'm saying is that she has not added me to her Skype. She's not asked to be joined uh, joined on my Skype. So and perhaps she's called the wrong person. Uh, what they said, someone says, she's calling someone 12 times. Maybe she's calling Miles. Um, all I know well, is she's not calling up, me. I, she's come up as being online with me, but she hasn't come up with calling me. All right, so she may be calling the wrong person at any rate. Uh, and I can say that, you know, I'm more than willing to, to talk with her. So. Uh, at this moment, is there anything else we can add to the mix here? Are there any facts that you've read specifically in some of these articles that are going out there that need to be corrected that you would like to say before There's you have to leave? There's a huge load of baloney done by the, the, the Daily Telegraph that the BBC repeated that they used the term he died in June. Uh, there's a farce of my of my uh, flyer for my conference in August, that's the 30th of July, uh, 31st, whatever, July, 1st of August, the no, 12th, Jesus, when they had the 12th, 13th, and 14th of August in Pusey, and people uh, online are saying that this was the, he was going to speak at this conference in Poland, and they used my flyer to illustrate the Polish conference, which happened in, in April, and they used my flyer, which is in Pusey, Wiltshire, uh, for the conference that he was going to go to. I mean, it's, it's this is just ridiculous. 
Right. Uh, well, okay. I think we've established that. Anything else that has not been discussed uh, that needs to be discussed in terms of uh, any other information? I, you know, if uh, if there's anyone associated with Max who has more information, feel free to contact me. Of course. Well, uh, there will be an individual that will not come on board, and he stated. Uh, hello, he's still there. Yeah. He stated that, quote, they should not have been able to kill Max. And the bottom line is that um, uh, they're right. Like Sarah. Okay, Rachel, who is to gender? Do you know this person to gender? Gil? That's, that's Taj, and he could be he could be gating for Max uh, for Sarah. All right. Hello. Uh, okay. Um. I don't, um, sorry, I have to uh, get a text from you first telling me who you are um, so that I can Tejinda then. Tejinda is uh, uh, one of the, uh, hello, Sarah. Yes. I'm trying to bring you in on group always way to go. Hello? Can you see Sarah? No, because I'm in Sarah right now. Hello, Sarah. You're on air with Kerry Cassidy. Hello. I'm quite pissed off about a lot of this stuff. Um, one second. Let me turn this off. Okay. Hello. Sorry about that. I had a call in the back. Hi. Okay, Sarah. So uh, please identify yourself. I'm not going to put my camera on. It's obviously me. I'm not going to put my camera on. I'm That's okay. I'm you don't. Uh, simply I'm say your name. Could you simply say I'm your name? Sarah Adams. Thank you. Um, I want to say a lot of this stuff is great. Obviously, Miles. Miles will fix it up. First of all, all this stuff is lies, and I'm not going to sit here and accept this for when you knew my Max was getting back with me. Don't lie about that. Sandra lied about a whole bunch of strips that were all that I had to get a whole bunch of people trolling me and sending me into Okay, the um, this is a very bad connection. Hello? Um, it's uh, a rather bad connection, so we need you yes, to speak um, clearly. Um, there seems to be an echo at your end as well. Let me try to pull up my phone because I think this is very important and I, I think that people would really like to see this because I'm going to tell the truth and obviously Vanessa's backed me up on a lot of stuff and it was lied. I was put out of the conference not because of Vanessa or Max because Max is going to be put out of the conference because he wanted me to come. It's Sandra and you and I have the messages in my files that I'll post them up and you're not going to sit here and lie to people. And the reason you're not posting up that interview is because me and, and Vanessa told me Okay, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. Me, don't you sit here and lie to people. I'm sick of your lies, and I'm going to go okay, and Okay, Sarah, you're, you're on our live. Okay, Sarah. Hello. I love guys, and you were a shitty person who had people around you to me. And I had both basically Tosh and some people of my following that are love me, that supported me. Otherwise, you guys bullied me out of everything in life. And yes, you're going to run and get off. Okay, Sarah, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so uh, a lot of us are not party to maybe some of this stuff you're talking about. Can you be a bit more, speak a little slower and be a bit more clear? Okay, I'm sorry. It, it's impossible to understand yeah. you. Okay, Carrie, give me one second. I'm going to sign it on my phone, and then I'm going to go in and get on um, here. It'd be better if you call me directly rather than go through Max's phone, I think. Uh, I'm going to no, do my phone. I don't have Max's phone. Through my phone, because I'm on my computer, and my computer does not have a good connection, and I want to go ahead and sort of speak about all this stuff now. That way I can straighten it up, because I think so much has happened that's been awful and terrible, and I'm having to go to mainstream media to get the truth out, and now they're saying the mainstream media is lying when they're not lying about stuff. Uh, okay.
at the moment, uh, again, it's it. I think my audience is going to have a hard time understanding you. If you want to call me by phone, um, it's going to be a little difficult. I'm, 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 so I can't call you by phone. I'm going to say okay. Right. So you're going to have to call me on Skype. Is there some reason? Uh, it looks like. Are you Sarah Rachel? Is that your Skype? Yes, but here I've got. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, okay. Well, okay. then I'll call you back on that number because uh, that will be better. Okay, but, Yes, Sarah, you're incoherent on a lot of things. You need to call direct to Kerry Cassidy. Right. So um, I am not able to hang up on Sarah here on this line. I will. I know. I, I'm. She's uh, Sarah. I'm going to hang up on you if you need to call Kerry Cassidy direct. Okay? I'll call her because I've got the, her phone over here. Okay. Well, I'm going to uh, Sarah. I'm going to uh, cancel your call. You need oh. to call Kerry direct. And speak slower because it's too fast. We're getting a lot of uh, distortion on your call. I'm going to call you guys on my call, which is much better. Okay, okay, Sarah, I'm not going to cancel your call if you want to, or we can reconnect. Okay, that's it. Right, okay, before you, you say you're having to go on another interview right after Here, this. Can you guys hear me? Uh, no, Sarah. this is not, um, you haven't called me on uh, my Skype. My Skype is Snow Jaguar. That's the, the number you need to call me. Okay, uh, basically, is this is this better, though? Because I've got on my phone now instead of my computer. Okay, Sarah, okay, you're yes, now clear. Yes, it's you're better. Clear. Okay, Go, go ahead. ahead. Okay, so give me one second. I'm going to plug in my charger here. So what I want to make straightforward is that, one, Max went through a lot of stuff. He needed healing people around him that were trying to help him. I did a lot of healing for him, and Vanessa can go ahead and back me up on that, and she had backed me up on this. He needed to be around healing people. People were exploiting him. I'm disgusted at the interviews that were done to Max before he died where he looked so sick, and nobody has even called the ambulance. Nobody has called doctors. They basically were thwarting him to do, to, to do more of the interview. It's absolutely disgusting. Okay. Uh Max, uh, did yes, it? Sarah, we concur on that, and that is the point that I made with the BBC this afternoon that this was um, a demonstration by agencies of uh, a weapon. What system agencies? That they were These stupid people around him, basically, that are part of stupid cults that are utterly satanic, that have no heart. You, they didn't see that he was sick and did yes, not have a doctor Absolutely. or anything. They're absolutely disgusted, and I've had to fight with this whole group of people who've said horrible stuff about me and did horrible, uh, said all sorts of horrible stuff about even his family. I've had to fight with these people for months, and I'm absolutely sick of it. Okay, well, well uh, Sarah, if this is your opportunity, uh, I'll, 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 I'll mute Matt's and this being is your used show. for all sorts of things. He was being used for a lot of different stuff, as I am. I am used to psychically pick up information all the time. It's very tiresome. I'm used for a lot of different stuff that I go through. And basically, I bonded with him because of a lot of things. And it was it's really hard to go through this. And nobody understands like what I've been through. They don't understand that I went to the ER three times, that I collapsed, and that I, it's, I've had a hard time coping with this. And OK, Sarah, <laughs> Sarah, um, you know, I talked to one of the filmmakers who filmed him before he died. Uh, I do know there was some, some interesting, uh, let's say, occult link-ups back there but i do also feel that and you can actually tell me what you think of this link-ups why is it that the freaking people um wait one second wait one second let me ask my handlers, question who are the handlers that abuse the children why are they suddenly now suddenly quote deprogrammers this is what let I me know. let I me ask know. a because question there's a group of at least five people all five, right five people in the awake community who are super high or quote deprogrammers or connected to mars or connected to quote you know other stuff sort of satanic quote ritual abuse or they claim they also have sacrificed children and why are these people who i know who are handlers who are the ones who are the top ones why are they suddenly the quote the victims and quote deprogrammers i want to know why this is reversed okay and you're you're, you're covering the victims that slow were in the down program, slow down killing them 
okay, I appreciate what you, the information you have. I want to get because your they information. Tried to kill me. So they they have attacked me very badly since Max Fest. Before Max Fest, I was having a hard time. I couldn't eat or anything. Something was terribly was happening to me too. We were talking about it. I basically told him to go pray because I'm quite. I have deep connection, sort of divine spiritual connection. That's how bad it had got. Okay, okay. Nobody come to, came and asked. Everybody escalated this into insanity. They don't know what went on. Right. I, I appreciate that. I do have the feeling, based on having watched those video interviews at the very end with Max, that his soul wanted him to be able to continue to talk to the public because he was revealing what was happening to him at the time. And people you know, they do carry, they get out of bodies, they go into other bodies, they rape children, they do all sorts yeah, of I'm stuff. I'm very they, aware of all murder. of this. You know that they can jump out of one body into another body? Yes, of course. This and is understandable. And absorb that soul energy. I know a lot uh, of things, Carrie, that I don't know yes, about. The, the, Sarah, the, right. the, 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 data, the data on this indicates, and I discussed it with Vanessa, that he was potentially already passed on and reanimated for the second part of that last interview. There was a period of about 36 hours between the first part of the final interview and the second. He messaged me like not even hour. Well, he messaged me not even 24 hours before he died. He messaged me and he was very happy that he was going to see me because I decided to get back with him. And he had been wanting to get back with me for months. And he was very happy about that. He did not plan on dying. And I could tell you, I was time, I like time jump. I jump out of my body to other timelines and to other people and stuff like that and I always get back to my body you know what how they you blocked him out of his body so we can't go back get back into his body just like they said the in the movie cabin in the woods before they let out the clown demons by the way they let out each demon each demons in that uh, each set of demons before they let out um, demons they uh, kill Thor the actor uh, Chris Hemsworth, that looks exactly like Max. Now, he plays Brighton with his wife named Sarah. Now, Max is born in Brighton. He plays that in the new movie, The Huntsman, Snow White and the Huntsman 2. Oddly enough, the actor looks like Max's clone. And you know how he dies in there? He dies with a hologram electric uh, sort of thing that he's burned through. When Max went to get back in his body, he couldn't get back in his body because the electric around him, that's what I believe is part that they used that uh sort of as an electric wall when he went to get back sure that body. that would be like a scalar weapon okay He's let me so ask you okay let's let's say goodbye Sarah. to miles yes miles let's reconvene in a later point okay yeah. um thank you so much for coming on the show and for sharing what you know about Max's murder, about uh, your connection with Vanessa. We will try to get Vanessa on the show if I she's willing. That, I assume, Miles, that you can be more straightforward and you can be more more straightforward and blunt and not lie and not carry on a whole bunch of stupidity because I will be blunt to the main media about it and then you'll have to deal with me. And I, you may think that I'm a naive little girl, but you don't understand. I am not saying you're a naive little girl at all, Sarah. Don't up with me because I lost somebody that I loved and I had a time yes. jump in the future and he's trying to get back here right now but guess what I can fuck up a lot of people if I want and don't fuck with what I love and don't lie about it because I will not I'm not somebody kind to deal with when it comes to that and usually I am but this isn't the situation this instant and I really don't care what anybody thinks you lose somebody you love you see how that feels I've been through trauma since a little child you do not understand what i've been through i was locked up till 25 i've been put through so much in different programs in different stuff you have no idea the trauma i've been through and i've been kind this whole time but nobody will walk on somebody i love and walk on me and lie about it i will not allow this okay uh M miles have you left or are you still there no uh uh, uh Sarah is linking well, through my Skype, in, in, so Sarah, you need to follow, you need to deal, so you need to connect. You can do an interview with me soon, Miles, and we can talk yes. straight to straight. Yeah, Thank absolutely, you. yes. I'm sure the public will be happy to see that, yes. Okay, yes. Sarah, Another, are you no, able Sarah, to call Sarah, me Sarah, directly? Sorry, sorry, Sarah, the, the important thing, you didn't hear this this afternoon, the important thing is that the BBC, uh, Primetime Radio 4 program, uh, mentioned the whole thing about Max. This afternoon, right? Now, this is a very, 
everything. It's going to go viral. And this, we've been, me and Vanessa and lo lovely Taj, by the way, he's just the most amazing. We've been able to get away a whole bunch of these stupid trolls and actually been putting out a lot of the truth. And this is what's important. <laughs> been quite about it. And I, you know, I just got Vanessa's well, go ahead. Uh, okay, uh, Sarah, I have to go to another show now. Uh, on the uh, west coast of the United States, because uh, on my okay, time. Okay, just make sure it's uh, a good one. Don't yeah, talk so let, let us, yeah, okay. Okay, let us Sarah, get this you together. need to call me I directly need... to, if you want to continue on the show with me uh, at this time, you, you need to call me on my Skype at Snow Jaguar, okay? So you need to okay, hang up. So I thought, I, I think I've added you. Um, right. Okay. Be this. Okay, I will talk to you later, Miles. Have a good show. Okay, yeah, have a good show. And Let's this is time to get all this information out directly. Uh, Sarah, there's been a lot of stupid disinformation on the Daily Telegraph getting all the dates wrong. The BBC reported that today. So it's important that we nail this stuff down, get your opportunity to talk what you have to say, what you're saying, and, and get the information out. I right, will be thank you. Uh, Re, re putting together all the fast blasts which I did in conjunction with Vanessa. There was stuff that I had to say publicly which could not be said pri uh, privately, which could not be said publicly for important reasons. Uh, God bless. That was a bit because I have the messages and I'm, I'm quite close to Vanessa. Yeah. She does tell yeah. me quite yeah. everything, yeah. and so I do know about well, it. Vanessa, Vanessa is dealing with her son, and she will deal with that as she needs to deal with her son. Well, that's it. And I'm close to Vanessa. I'm moving here to go ahead and be near her and and take care of her because that's what my I, I, I know that Vanessa has been dealing with US media all evening and is fast asleep at this time. It's now uh, 10 minutes to the hour, 4 a.m. British time. So I am on air in eight minutes. So I've got to go. Okay. Thank so, you so uh, much, Miles, for coming on the do show. That, Sarah. Let's say whatever you want to say. Let's get it done. Get it done. Done. So we we'll talk okay, later. I'll speak to you later. Bless you. Good day. And thank you very much, Kerry Cassidy. Very many blessings. I'm now going to cancel a call, which means you're going to lose Sarah. All right. Okay. I, under I understand. Cheerio. We'll get her. We'll get her back. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Good, Good night. night. Good, Good night, Miles. Bye. And Good thanks night. so much. Uh, so what we'll do is we will attempt to mm -hmm. now dial Sarah, and uh, using um, this this Skype and and see if it comes through. Uh, it should shouldn't be. A problem but you never know what goes on here so uh, I believe I see her here so I'm going to try calling her and see if she answers hello hello hi Sarah Hi. So you can hear me okay? This is Carrie Cassidy. Yes, hello, Carrie. I remember when we met a long time ago at the first space conference. I'm sorry, not bases, at the first conference ever in Nevada. I remember this. Okay, great. Do you remember that at the Super Soldier conference? Yes, I I sort of recognize your voice. I, I'm not seeing a picture of you, so I, I don't know exactly which person you are, but uh, I'll take your word for it. Uh, I was there and uh, and and thank you so much for coming on the show. People are listening. They want to know what happened. They want to hear your side of the story. You know, okay, so that conference, by the way, we went to, you know, that Michael Hemmingson, who also was friends, he's friends with Don Webb. He was friends with Don Webb. He was found dead of, quote, you know, drugs. Yes, and, I, I know that yeah, Michael Hemmingson was, was killed. He uh, was passing. He was white hat. He was white hat. And I had figured out through remote viewing him that he was white hat. I went up to him at the conference and yes. told him. And he said, are you going to punch me in the face for it? And I said, oh, no, you know, because he never wrote anything. To me no, actually, me. I actually wrote about Michael and we were in touch. Uh, I knew who he was. Yes. And uh, yes, I he, did it from remote viewing. I just figured it out. And he thought yeah. I'd punch him and he kind of hid from me a bit. Then, you and, know, we, we actually warmed up to each other. And he was giving certain information encoded on White Hat and then basically he was found dead because of that. Right. Uh, he, he, by the way, he, he was a, a novelist. He was a very interesting guy and a lot of people hated him for his characterizations that he put out on the, the web. But uh, he was actually trying to get the truth out um, using humor 
and uh, a very campy approach to he journalism. It. I encode a lot of stuff on my Facebook, like all sorts of stuff. People just think sometimes it's jokes or whatever. I quote all this stuff on my Facebook. But I right. just do it because, yeah, that's how information, it, it registers in the subconscious like that. And he was doing it that way. And he I was, was actually picking it up. Uh, well, okay. So at this moment, I mean, that's great that you you brought him up because a lot of people, I think, don't know uh, really about him and what happened to him and so on. Um, and and I think that that's a much more complex story. But right now, we're we're here for you, and we want to get your side of the story. So, what is it that you want to say about Max's uh, death? What you understand that happened, and perhaps to correct any. Uh, things that that went out there from uh, Miles or other journalists or even at this time are being put out there that you think uh, need to be corrected. Go ahead. Okay. Um, gosh, where can I start? There's so much that needs to be corrected. It's absolutely ridiculous. And I'm absolutely furious at Miles, uh, you know, and a lot of this stuff that's going on, it's absolutely disgusting. Uh, well, I think Miles did demonstrate that he's willing to listen to your side of the story. So perhaps he ha also had my the side of the story, or rather the truth. That's what is considered as in a whole bunch of crap was put out that is lies. And it's Vanessa was fine with me going to the basis conference. So was Max. Max wanted to go with me and do an interview. In fact, I had collected a lot of information about how they are transferring soul essence, how they're transferring one soul essence from one body to another. And um, they've transferred quite a few soul essences into the awake group and certain people, like from people like Antoine LaVey. I've tracked down where Antoine LaVey's soul essence has been transferred into another body. So I was going to speak about that and Max was going to speak his part. We were going to meet back here and we, I decided I would you know, get back with him and he was very happy about that. And Vanessa can back this up that we were going to get back together and he was going to move here to be near his family. Well, anyhow, the thing is, is that basically, you know, I suddenly am pushed out of the conference and I tell Max and Max goes and tries to fix it. And then he's like, I'm having a whole bunch of crap. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? And then I eventually get messages between Miles and this other girl from the conference where she's because Max said that he was wanted to be there with me she threw a fit and told matt miles that she would not go to the conference if me and max were there and i have these these messages from them and he was i guess he's close to this girl and you know basically he decided to go ahead and say max didn't want me there or vanessa didn't want me there which were absolute lies okay. and i have the the, the messages to prove this and he went and put that out it's like i wasn't wanted there because of this I have the thing that they had reduced me and Max's speaking time to an hour where they want to give us a half an hour each because basically this girl and Miles, she was telling Miles that if I was there and Max, she would not attend it. And he was really worried that this girl attended the thing, I guess. because Okay, let me her. ask you, because this is actually not to do with his death. It's to do with the conference that Miles gave uh, actually several months before his death. So why, uh, you know, why the, the emphasis on... that we were supposed to arrive to before, after he died, he, he died be, right before this conference. Okay. So, so you were scheduled to appear at a conference together. Is that yes. what you're saying? We were scheduled to appear like at least a month and a half right. before he died right, at this conference. Okay. Do you, uh, do you disagree with what has been said about the idea that that Max, while he was at Monica's house, was saying he didn't want you involved. Do you think he was oh, trying I, to protect I you? I disagree with this because okay. no, this is, it, like I said, it was not him. It was basically what I just said, that story that I just said. And we have the messages. I got the messages between, from, we've got the messages basically between this girl and Max where she is not happy. I'm going to be uh, that he wants to go get me from the airport and bring me to the conference. She just throws a fit. Then she goes to Miles and basically says, well, since Max, you know, Max blocked her because she was unhappy. She threw a fit to him. He told his mom about it. And then, you know, she had asked him to work on some project with her. And okay, he, but bas I, he basically I, decided, go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, 
just because you're you're going kind of going on about this and we don't have no, a I'm, chronology I'm, I'm, just saying, I, I'm trying to get a chronology it. it's not that no max wanted to come back he was going to talk about a lot of stuff and i was going to talk about a lot of stuff including certain politicians and specific people in the weight group are all in all sort of in a very uh cult books rings spread across the world basically this whole thing is spread sure. in in religions and everything what i discovered what he just he discovered was absolute insanity and we were going to both bring our parts and speak about it at the conference okay. and we were, we were we were quite happy to do that okay so I, but at this moment what i want to do with you is is very back political up. thing going on in the united states right now i discovered that certain political people who are running for presidents, the status of president in the United States, are working with certain people in the weight group who are supporting them. And these people are all black magicians and they're summoning it high entities and yes. they're putting them in bodies and they're holding these entities in bodies. And I do believe that uh, this is this is the way to keep them here and then use them. And this is what they're doing. I discovered this. And I haven't spoken about any of this because nobody wants to give me interviews. I bit basically you know, everybody, I've had been thwarted by everybody in this area. I'm thwarted by everybody. It's like when I know this stuff, I talk about it. I'm basically pushed off as I don't know what. And then not only that, they started all these rumors about all this crap and started saying all this insanity. And it's as if now, because we just, I discovered that he died, his part, he, di he died. And I've been severely attacked because of this. Sure. Okay, well, I still want to back up a little bit here because uh, we know that Max died in July, uh, around the 17th, actually, maybe this, the night of the 16th. Um, what I'm wondering is the conference that you're referring to is something that was scheduled for August, okay? So it was going to happen at least conference. a month. Yes, and I was also uh, supposed to speak there, and I did as it happened, but I did it long distance. But that was, you know, that was later. So let's talk about right before he died. Did you have interaction with him? Because my understanding yes. is you broke up with him uh, for a period of time prior to when I he did died. I because he did. He was having some issues and he needed to take care of them. And I'm very, very deeply spiritual. And I explained to him that he needed to. And I had, you know, after a couple of chances, I decided he needed to go do some healing on his own and then we could reconnect. And I know how Max is. He would. He, he doesn't didn't want to lose me and I knew that if I was being a bit tough love on him he would straighten up more and he did tell his friend Karen you know he has a friend uh, Karen which was on the basis project he did tell his friend that he was straightening up because of that which is which is a great thing because I was very happy about that okay and I had split up with him and went to my aunt who's in a wheelchair in the United States and was staying with her over there and you know he was he was in contact with me the whole time every single day i have you know if you ever want i can show you i've done sure. just thousands of messages so from him were you in touch with him when he went to uh cyprus yes i was actually my little sister was over there my little sister and brothers are two little sisters and brother were over there with my mother and he had spoken to my sis little sister at cyprus before she's she's in France now, but back then she was over there in Cyprus, and he had spoken to her, and she had let me know that that okay. he had and do you to know, her. So uh, I was in touch. He was know, trying to, you know, he would told my little sister he wanted her to come and stay with us when we were here in England. Right. Do you know his 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 link up with? Uh, I forget the name of the person, but the, it was it's an older, uh, you know, it he had a reincarnational Monica? link up with Richard the Lionhearted. Wasn't that the name? Yes. Oh, wait. Uh, you're talking about Max's incarnation? Yeah. Yes, I'm talking about Max's reincarnation, the reason he went to Cyprus in the first place. Okay, can you explain to me a bit about that? Because he said something about that. Because uh, Well, my he talks about battle. it. He talks about it on the interview, uh, one of the last interviews he did. He basically seems to have felt a very strong connection with Richard yeah, he always the Lionheart. He, was, he always thought he was Richard the Lionheart, that that was one of his right. incarnations. And when we, were, when we stayed at this place, we found out that it was owned by Richard Lionheart, or he was under the dominance of Richard the Lionheart. Right, and, and he went to visit this place in Cyprus, this castle. 
Yes, and we had visited one here too in the United Kingdom. And I think, in fact, where we lived on Castle Street, the little castle that was in ruins or that w w our house was built of the stones, I do think that was also um, that was also one of Richard the Lionheart's uh, okay. small castles that he had a long time ago. All right, so I just wanted to draw, you know, people are wanting to understand what was going on with Max, how he ended up. Uh, to be targeted the way he, he has was. Many incarnations from Atlantis and Egypt, sure. and uh, he has many incarnations. I know him from Atlantis and from Egypt and from lots of different stuff. He's very, very gifted. He can do lots and lots of things. He can time jump. He can do all sorts of things. He's not dead. Max can never die. He's like me. He can just jump. You know, I, the other day when I tr I tried to find him, I went and found him in the future, and okay. he's just trying to find his way back here. That's what he was explaining to me. All right, fair enough. Uh, so you had a very strong bond with him. How long uh, were you involved with him? So I know Max for seven years, and okay. we were together for three years. Okay, you're broke, breaking up just a little. Uh, so you... okay, okay. So I knew him for seven years, and we were together for three and a half years. Whereas um, he basically he wanted to get married and um lots of different stuff he was quite lovely to me a lot he was okay. very sweet especially because i have some health issues but what i go through i do get quite a few health issues because sometimes it's very draining and he was always very protective of me and generally people want to say we argue but we did argue and at times we we really argued really bad but in the end we were always running to each other and that was always known every Everybody around us sort of knew that. Okay. Now, as uh, would you consider yourself, uh, you know, I know that some people don't like this terminology, but would you consider yourself, for lack of a better word, a super soldier? So I know it's horrible um, things. So what I would say is that I've been used. I been used to psychically pick up stuff, remote view stuff. I can, like I said, I can jump out of my body. I can go to diff jump into different timelines. It's, it's extensive the things that I could do. Um, I can go out of my body and go interspatial. I could go out of my body and go to in, in other dimensions. Okay, and when and did you discover the this? Thing. But what? the problem is, is that we were, I, he was also bad, we were battling something that some, okay, so this is what's tied it ties in too, is that when I put, we put, I put together this whole thing, they want to bring some ancient, ancient force back and they think it's going to give them power. And basically some of the last things I know is Max was also battling that, but the very people we were staying with were part of that group of wanting to bring this thing back. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so in terms of your own awareness of who you are and what you've been able to do, when did you uh, sort of wake up to that? When I was a little child, I could already do all this stuff. So I already kind of knew, I already remember before I, came into this body right but did you know you know because a lot of people don't really fully woke, wake up until even the last 10 years so were you already aware of how you were being used yes of course ever since i was younger well on and on and off at a good point i i just just i was able to get out of it for a good long time just recently they asked me to do some stuff because you know it was a specific there's a specific uh, faction in the United States that does not want certain candidate to become president because they suspect that they are using time jumping technology to actually do the same thing where they can jump into bodies and use certain candidates. So they suspected this and they were asking me to gather information on it. So I did recently do that just to help change a timeline so there wasn't a war in that timeline because that's it. If you gather the information and you deliver it, it can also change timelines or if you get an electrical charge. And this is what I'm saying. They needed that electric fence around Max to change the timeline to a timeline where he's dead because they needed the electrical charge to do so. To change a timeline, you need a huge electrical charge. This is why, too, they were trying to use the recent, uh, there was the recent, uh, you know, um, hurricanes that went on, too. They are trying to use that to change timelines. And that's why the face of the beast was in that that uh, hurricane because they were they're trying to bring that thing to life right and basically 
they're trying to do a timeline and that's it they had collected enough energy to try to manifest into this realm and that's why it showed up literally it's space there that's what they're doing that's they're okay, collecting why? all this energy through isis from, yes. from all these things they're collecting all this energy and they're battling how they battle like to battle me, you would have to use energy you can't use like other stuff that's the only way to battle certain beings like you sure. have to use energy Okay, why do you think that uh, people were saying uh, that Max wanted to keep his distance at a certain point from you? Was You think that that was all Max disinfo? Max would say he wanted to keep his distance from me. He'd come running to me. He was always like this. Okay, so do you think he was, uh, was, was he being taken over on and off? Or what there is was, your... Yeah, there was something that was really messing with him. I was talking about that to his mom today. Something was really messing with him. That's why I was... I didn't understand like something was really messing with him. He would go like back and forth and he wouldn't remember what he said or did at certain points. And this was very worrisome. Okay. What about you? Do you feel that you get taken over or not? Do honestly, I battle quite a bit. It's, it's very, very hard. Usually with him, I think we would both help each other. I don't feel like I can be taken over. I, I'm okay. generally really aware of everything around me. And if, something tries to get in my field, I get sort of where I, everything around me sort of goes off so that I could take care of it. Um, unless the only way to get something into me would be through, this is what, why I just am very much alone too, because some of their agents that they use are very promiscuous because they can pass uh, through, you, you know, once they get close to other person into their field, that's how they can install entities into them. So I'm very sure. alone because of this. So no, I'm very, very careful at whatever is around me or whatever's in my field and very alert. So I would say they have to drain me really, really badly to be able to do anything to me. And even there, I will refuse because like I said, despite everything and despite all I've been through, I still have a very divine connection to a force which I call God. And I do believe that that force in the end protects me and takes care of me. And even when I've been terribly down, I've had help from that. So that's what I'm saying. I do not, I would not, I'd prefer to die than be taken over and be used for something dark. I definitely prefer to die. All right. I appreciate that. Uh, so when you look at the situation of his death, do you feel that he was targeted uh, by this group? And then are you able to name any of the sort of targeted, the group I, in general? This, so, why don't they should just come out and tell the truth what they're doing and i'm not specifically saying that these certain people but i'm saying that they are part of it because one they is not dead he was put into a different body his soul essence was put into a different body um they know how to do this and they've been doing it for quite a while now including all of the ones in the vatican some of those people those ones you see popes and stuff have been alive for hundreds of years where they've just been done body transfer sure uh uh, soul transfers from one energy, they take out the soul and put it into another body. So they've been alive for hundreds of years like right. that. Uh, they should, something's trying to mess with me right now. It's very upset. I'm saying this. Uh, so they should just come out and say that they're trying to, they did a whole bunch of uh, tests on different people to try to make a body that was resilient enough to hold one, a very ancient evil and they, I'm pretty sure that they tried Cas it on Casvolt, but Casvolt, it made, made sickly aged him and made him not well. But I do think that he was a target for that. And I do think that they wanted to use Max for that. And if in this interview with Monica and uh, Madeline, uh, Madeline, they, Madeline, they sit him in the way they sit him, it literally looks like he has horns in the back. And then I had this, this thing where I knew that they were targeting him because, you know, how resilient and strong he was. And I believe that he refused whatever they were trying to do to him. He refused it. And okay. they also blocked, I think they wanted to block his soul out and put something else in him. And I think it did not transfer right. That's what I think. All right. Were you in touch with anyone at the house when uh, no, Max died? No, because that whole group did not want any part to do with me. In fact, they basically, when Max died, tried saying it was me, my fault, and his family's fault. And they sent some suspicious messages, like to, the last message to Max was saying about 
to saying how you're going to be poisoned by syrup. I'm in the United States, which is absolutely ridiculous. Why would they tell him that? Right. Okay. It, uh, it was as if they thought that the police might find that and maybe they could frame me for something. And that's how absolutely stupid they are. All right. You're working with a certain group. Is that right? <laughs> Honestly, I work for uh, God. <laughs> that's in the end. All I right. know it sounds a bit crazy, but I do. That No, it doesn't sound crazy at all. Uh, so you don't feel you're working work with on, any group? I, well, I work for God and in the end, God is what groups as for I like I said you know for a long time there was a good time where I was uh, I had a hard time because I was being used to collect information but I got over that and I do you know I always rely on my connection to God to be free and stay away from that but they like I said they do ask me to collect information at certain okay, times who is, I'm, they? I'm, who is they <laughs> Are you able I'm, to say, I'm, I mean, you don't have to name a name, but can you talk in generalities at all? There are specific groups that are monitoring the timelines that, you know, and they've, they decide of, you know, if they do this or this, that timeline is going to be a better timeline. Right. And I can choose to help out with that by collecting information and delivering it up or doing certain things, going to certain places and changing the energy to do so. Okay, now at some point, Max was uh, sent under the control of, of Michael Prince. You know that, right? Yes, I know about uh, uh, Michael Prince. I know about Caswell. Okay, and and at some point he got away uh, into his own and was able to do his own thing and start to become, in, a, in essence, more of a whistleblower, right? I am... Um... <laughs> Yeah, he eventually he got well. He got with me, and he was starting to. I started to teach him a lot. You know how to approach this in a more spiritual manner, I think, and a more heart oriented manner. And it was, you know, he it was probably it was good progress for him. He was actually getting better, and you could tell in the pictures he was quite well. And the, the last faces me and him went, did together, he just looks so vibrant. You know, he right. It's, it's a far shot from what he looks in these videos and for anybody to say he wasn't doing good around me he looked vibrant and beautiful around me you could tell and when he's away from me at these in these interviews he looks I don't recognize him he looks so sick and ill I you know and I wasn't looking at his last interviews so I just couldn't do it because okay what about I, um yes and I, I I can understand what you're saying so what about the notion that he was using uh drugs towards the end what do you think about that well obviously I've seen a lot of um the victims in this area go on and off of that he did a lot of healing, healing. they said that his organs were that of a 29 year old and basically that's what they're saying so that tells you a lot right there um he had some issues with it, but I helped him and his family helped him quite a bit with it. Okay. Uh, why did he stay so long in Poland? Do you happen to know? You know, I know that he went there and then for the conference, then he said, he said, listen to me. He said he was, he tried to get involved with some sort of health company out there because he knew that I wanted him to sort of, you know, be very very healthy so he was trying to get involved with some sort of health company out there that had he said was going to pay him and he was going to go ahead and sort of do a whole thing on you know a whole series of supplements help them design a whole series of supplements and stuff like that because he knows how i'm into superfoods so he stayed there for one for that's what he told me and because he got some work there and because basically uh he wanted to go ahead and do some work there. So that's why he was telling me that he stayed there. And okay. then eventually he started to tell me he saw certain people around him like shift and he didn't trust them. And then he started to get more wary, wary about it. And then eventually he was like, I'm going to come back to the UK. I'm going to go back, you know, to see, to see his mom, to see he wanted me to come back to the UK from the United States. He was even going to come get me from the United States. He was like, I'm going to come and get you from over there. So, he was planning to come well, back okay when okay. when was he planning to come back do you know what month wow not, wow he was planning days even at least a week after he died to come back to the uk okay Is and, he's in, uh, go ahead. let me ask you uh i was told that he was staying at monica's uh the uh, publicist's house 
he traveled with her to Cyprus and uh, I guess it was Miles saying that they were in a relationship. Do you feel that they were or not? Monica was not in a relationship with, she is obsessed with Max. They were not in a relationship at all. Basically, Vanessa had to straighten this on the interview out. She, we have their messages. He has no attraction to Monica whatsoever. Absolutely ridiculous. Why would Miles put out there in a relationship? She's basically the age of his mother. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I wondered about that, but I'm simply trying to clarify. Vanessa just did an interview the other day clarifying this. All right. He he had no attraction to her whatsoever, and she was very upset about this. In fact, we have messages from her to Max, where she's absolutely furious that he does not want to be with her. Okay. So they there was... tried to block him off from talking to me because they didn't think that he quite, I guess they were, didn't think that he still loved me and they were upset that he did and they were pissed off about this. All right. And so, and this idiot over there in Poland that wants to promote his new book didn't give a crap about Max's health or making sure he was okay. You know, you're quote a D programmer. Why don't you make sure somebody's okay? No, he basically didn't give a crap. They just pushed him until he he looked like he was exhausted on those interviews. They pushed him and pushed him. I was telling him, Max, you need to go get help. You need to go. You know, he was desperate. He said, things are attacking me. Things are going very wrong over here. He was not happy with Monica. She would not let him talk to me. He was having to go outside and sneak out to talk to me. Otherwise, I could hear her in the background very angry about it. She, he kept saying she kept trying to sleep with him, and he wouldn't do it. There was all sorts of stuff that he she was trying to basically push herself on him. Okay. So at this time, uh, what I want to do is, is go to the chat, because this is a show. You know, we're on YouTube, and you have basically given your permission uh, to be on this show, and we are, are doing a live show. So I, I want to make sure that you understand, you know, the scenario that you're involved in right now. And I also want to ask your permission, if you don't mind, to ask if anyone, there is a chat room associated that you were part of. There may be some questions in the chat room. Would you be interested in answering some questions? Sure, I'll answer questions because I, I quite love people. They're quite awesome, except for the stupid future trolls out there. There are amazing people that have just been awesome. And I wouldn't be here today sitting here speaking to you if I hadn't been had so much support because everybody lied and sort of bashed me down. So I, I basically will do anything I can to answer any, anybody's questions who are nice. If there's any trolls, I will not answer them. They can fuck right. off. Okay. Okay. So questions again, if, for everyone in all caps, that's all I ask. Um, it, it just makes it easier for me to catch the question aside from the chat that's going on uh, and isolate it. So, okay, we do have some questions coming in. So someone wants to know, has Max communicated from the other side lately? Yes, he did. A day ago, he I was actually on the hunter's moon, or the new moon. Um, and it's funny, I said uh, Snow White and the Huntsman 2 that came out about the guy's name is Brighton and he was born in Bright and I call him the Bright One and his wife is Sarah, so it's very odd. He did communicate with me and he was in the future do doing stuff for future timeline and I had to jump to the future and I said to Max, I'm, you know, I'm so sick and heartbroken and he was like, I'm trying to find a way back there. So, you know, it kind of reminds me of in John Carter, the movie where he's, you know, he's having to time hop to try to find a way back to Dejah Thoris. So it's, it's, right. it's um, yes. Okay, fair enough. Uh, he does communicate with me everywhere I walk. I see Max everywhere I walk. I basically see Max. This, this girl the other night, I didn't know from Adam and Eve, I was at the cafe and this girl named Max, she just grabbed my hand and started crying and hugging me and said, I love you and all this stuff. So <laughs> I said, oh, Max, you took over her body. <laughs> okay, uh, someone here wants to know how you met Max. Oh my God, you know, it had to be through Ch James Casbolt. He tagged us on a, on a long time ago. He had this uh, profile called Laylaw and I didn't, you know, he tagged both of us and then we just started chatting and Max kept defending me online against, you know, some other trolls on there and that's it. That's, then we met up eventually, but that's how I, I it was James Casbolt who put us into sort of contact, I think. Okay. Uh, someone wants to know if you know why he, they're calling it, got whacked. 
Why do you think Max was killed? Oh, because Max is doing a lot of good. You know, he's like me. We can just go do lots of stuff. Uh, I can, he could time jump and do all of this stuff. And not only that, a lot of the information that he knew, and not only that because of his body, I do think that he was being targeted because of how strong he was. And they, like I said, they're trying to find bodies to put the highest demons into and beings. And they've already found one, you know, Antoine LaVey. Uh, they found one for that him and some other ones. And basically Max is, was augmented. And I do know he was augmented. And they, he's, he's quite a bit of money, I think, in tech along with the fact of what he was doing and the fact of what he was discovering, there's quite a few reasons of why they targeted Max. Okay. Uh, let me see. Is Does anything Casbolt say is true? Uh, for example, the diamond spiders, someone wants to know. Um, yeah, I've, I've ran into those things. Uh, when I was younger, I ran into those things. But honestly, I think there's a... Um, an Apollo movie, I can't say is it Apollo 13, I've maybe not, if I, you know, it's in the middle of the night right now here, uh, where it talks about the rocks and the diamond, uh, rocks being sort of uh, spiders and stuff like that. There's some Apollo horror movie about that. And just recently, I don't know if you know, but they just found out that some of the moonstones that the, the are not real, the moon rocks are not real that are in museums. And I'm wondering why if that has to do with that, because on that movie, and from what I remember too, from the stuff I've been, those rocks were alive a lot on a mic, even on a microbe level, and that stuff can literally take over the body on a microbe level and rewrite the DNA. So I'm wondering if they didn't want it in the energy field too, and if they didn't want it inside the museums because of that, because it would be access, it could access basically everybody who passed the museum, so they just gave them fake rocks. Well, okay, that's possible. Actually, I, I do think that there are, um, you know, the real thing, though, in some museums that are doing just that. Uh, let's see. I'm, I'm just scanning really quickly to see if there's any other... That's how many, that's how many beings they can come on meteorites or stuff like yes. that. When it hits the Earth, whatever comes in the vicinity, they can go right into that body from... Well, this is also, uh, you know, when they take museum pieces out of ancient sites and they put them Egypt, in museums. Yeah. That's what I was trying to say. That's how they do it. And when I was young, they, their cassette or or the gods opened that grave, I could sense it when I was young. Yeah, I'm aware of how they do this. Okay. Someone wants to know uh, if you think this was a last-ditch effort to control Max that went wrong. I think to control him and because he wasn't inherent to what they wanted to do for him um, to, you know, he was fighting it. I do believe that they targeted him for a couple of different things, like I said, and I don't, I don't think that they quite planned it to go the way it did. I do think they planned on locking Max out of his body, put something else in there. And, uh, but I don't think that that happened. Right. And I think I think yeah. they were unsuccessful. I think that much is clear. Uh, but th that is interesting. Uh, and they were definitely trying to control him. I do think people asking these questions, I would recommend see some of the last interviews he did even I mean, before he got sort of sick at the very end, he was revealing a lot of good information. And that has to lead you to understand that there was a reason why they tried to shut him up. Um, so that's worthwhile. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Did he leave any printed material or written work? Oh, Max does not write like that. I don't, he really, he did sigils. He did different stuff, but he didn't write like that. He would have just written it on his Facebook and that's about it, honestly. And the, the messages to me were not, they were definitely intimate. So it's not we did talk about stuff, but I, it was not, it was a lot of more personal stuff to me and him during the last, before, you know, he passed, it was more because we were getting back together. So I would say that, you know, I don't think so. I did hear that his computer or something was wiped out. No, his mom said that something was wiped of his before it was sent back. His SIM card was taken. Oh, really? Okay. Too. Uh, did someone wants to know, did Max have a revelation regarding the beginning of World War III? Oh, Lola. I, um, 
I avoid this question. I don't want to go there. I just prefer not to today. That okay. question is very a uh, deep question. I know stuff about this, which I, I don't want to reveal right now because like I said, I've about timelines, if it's charged, depending on how much this interview is charged, if I said the wrong thing, it could thwart it into making that timeline. Does that make sense? Sure. There's From no, all you the don't have to answer anything. Directing this way. Yeah. That's how they do it. That's why, like, that's why they're doing this conference on LeVay's death because they're, they're, you know why they're doing this conference on LeVay's death? They're actually re celebrating his rebirth when they put him into another body. That's why they're doing this conference at the end of the month on Le Antoine LeVay's death. Okay. Um, what about Max's head injury? Did you know anything about that? Do you know that it looks like a hieroglyph or it, it looks like it has some sort of word in it? He shouldn't have a head injury because not even 24 hours before that, he sent me a picture of himself and there was no, nothing on his head whatsoever. He had a clear forehead. Okay. Uh, do you know anything uh, someone wants to know about the Fourth Reich? The Crusaders of Black Sun. I know lots of stuff about this. Um, again, we probably, probably would should set up a show very soon where I talk about all of this, including how they soul transfer and all these things. I'm trying to brush through the questions very quickly. I do know quite a bit about this and he did know quite a bit about it too. Okay. Uh, someone wants to know uh, today with all the revelations about Max's death in the mainstream media, why do you think, I mean, we know that it, it was basically Vanessa that, that sort of triggered this, but uh, if you well, we kind of both are going back and forth. We were back and forth all day today. It was insane. You know, I was doing the newspapers. They were going to her. Then to me, she was referencing back to me. And then I, we had today, today uh, um, more Good Morning America and referencing back back and forth. And the whole David Icke thing is just going back and forth. What, so, what do you mean by the whole David Icke thing? What are you talking about that? Well, they also approached to... Um, their area so we're just referencing back and forth because it's just insane so um, we were on re referencing wait 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 referencing david ike with regard to well, max as a, or, as, in, or uh, as a separate matter one of the people that we've got a whole bunch of just you know alternative and mainstream media on this and so me and vanessa were just working together all day today and, okay. and taj and just and christine she's really amazing too just trying to get it so it's out there. The right stuff is out there, you know, not lies because we just got tired of all the lies and all the crap going on. And so we decided just to go ahead and work together and get it out there both on mainstream. And it's it's just been a bit insane all day. Okay, well, it, it is good to get it out there. Uh, and of course this show is about actually trying to get the truth out as opposed to some of the, the misconceptions that are being put out in the mainstream. Uh, now I, I do, we do have to close this down. We've been going for um, several hours uh, and I, I'm sure you're tired. It's late there. Uh, I do want to ask you uh, whether or not you knew about the text that, uh, that his, his mother Vanessa received. Did you know she about did. it? Okay, so she received those texts. He had said something's wrong with me. I, he was really worried. I said, Max, go down, you know, go pray. We go pray. Put salt in your bath. I was getting very badly attacked. He was getting very badly attacked. Um, again, I can speak more about how we were getting attacked and what was happening. Basically, what I was seeing too. Uh, it was really insane. So he sent her that around the same time he'd sent me saying he was in trouble and I told him, All right. You know, you need to go ahead and take a salt bath. You need to pray. You need to ask the angel for protection. So I, I had I had told him that. Okay. Do you are you aware that uh this date uh today is uh in America is the seventeenth, that he died exactly three months ago? Yes, I'm aware of this. Okay. Did you guys choose this date on purpose? Uh, it, you know, it being you started in the obviously earlier today or even yesterday in the UK. And what, 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 in, in three months from now, time, what will be? What are you saying? From three months from now? Sure. Approximately will be 
basically Max is born on the winter solstice. The moons are very important. Okay, and so you you think he's going to come back around that time? I'm not saying anything about anything. I'm just saying is that their portals, all of this energy today, I said, I was trying to tell people to time travel, to change timelines, to jump back into bodies, you need energy. So all lots of energy, everything is calculated by what's higher up and Max is definitely connected to them. He's um, definitely connected to the higher ups. So everything is calculated. Sure. And yes, and that's why this it's so important that it happened today, but it was never calculated on this level. It's it was just going to happen from the higher ups on this level. Okay. Uh all right. So at this time, uh is there anything you want to say to wrap up? Uh and, and we can certainly have you back on the show in the future. Uh, you know I would like to do a show quite soon with you. We can where we can I need to speak about lots of stuff that's going on, including how they're how they're traumatized in humanity, how their body snatch and how their soul snatch and all sorts of stuff they're doing, how they're using soul energy to change timelines, uh, uh, all sorts of things. So I think that it would be very good to talk about that. We could talk about this stuff more in depth uh, okay. very soon in the future, if you're good with that, because I, I'm sure. I'm um, not sure quite how long I'll be doing interviews because I just need to go away alone for a while because um, I have specific stuff I have to do. I don't, I want, I'm going to sort of go AWOL for a while. So I need to go ahead and kind of get it out there before then. So it would be great to do an interview talking about all of that stuff. Maybe when I'm a bit more awake. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Uh, that'd be lovely. And so uh, I want to thank you again for coming forward. I know it took a lot of courage, um, you know, for you to join the show tonight. And so I want to thank you. And uh, I know that the people in the chat, it, I, it, as a reflection of everyone who's listening, which is a pretty substantial audience out there live, and this will go onto my website, onto YouTube immediately after we close this down. So the, the uh, sort of number of people who can listen to this will be growing hourly. Uh, is there any parting remarks you'd like to say to the public? Oh yeah, good. I needed to fix that Miles's crap load of insanity spewed out in the first segment because, and okay, so that video he, of me and Vanessa told him not to, it doesn't have any secret information, just Max was having a quite bad day. He was not doing well and we told him we didn't want that out there. I just didn't think it was right to put that out there. He was not well, Max demanded it, and then he needed to respect Max, and he decided when Max died, well, he might put it out there. Uh, me and Vanessa got furious and told him he can't put it out there. It's not because it has any top secret information or anything like that, and withhold or whatever. He absolutely makes this, blitzes it out like it's something grandiose, and he just can't put it out there because me and Vanessa will tell the public that he's an asshole. He puts it out there. So he, in the end, I'll have lawyers on it, and I'm sure she would too if he put that out there. See, this is why you can't put it out there, because not because it's some top secret crap. And it's just, I, okay. that's what I'm saying is that I, I'm trying to clear this. I would, do not go to Miles. Please go to Vanessa. I need, for now, tell Miles to do a show with me. And I'm telling the audience this, tell Miles does a show with me. Tell Miles actually comes straight and stops doing little rumors like Monica and Max are together. Absolutely ridiculous. And okay, all the rest I, of I think crap, that, you I know, want, I want this to is again, him. rumors are picked refer up. To him. Sorry, uh, I was just going to say that, you know, with all due respect for Miles, uh, he is a journalist, he gets information. He is and a journalist, he, not a gossip columnist that's supposed to be creating a gossip crap. Right, I appreciate that. Lies. But There's the bottom a line. between journalists. My friend Luke is a journalist. My friend Sean is a journalist. They're great journalists. In fact, they're Miles, straight up journalists. Okay, let's, 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 they're not you gossip know. I, I, I think that There's Miles has done a lot of good work and the people he that have been, a lot of good been work. interviewed he has. In fact, by he him. Put me on basis. Yeah, he absolutely. Needs to not spread around crap, and I'm going to teach him his his life lesson. Okay. He needs to come to reality. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So, anything else about Max specifically that you want to tell the public with this I last? I want to tell everybody uh, not. Go ahead. Troll him because if you troll his mother, I will. Bad things will happen to you. Just don't troll his mother. His mother's a sweet person. She's very kind, lovely. She needs support. She's not getting any money out of this. It's so much. It's it could be dangerous for her job. It's absolutely 
You told her mother you are an awful, disgusting person. Don't troll me because I'll tell you to fuck off and I'll teach you a good lesson and I will not be okay, nice. Okay, okay, okay. Too nice to troll. Right. Um, so I'm going to say, as for Max, the, the best thing you can do in respect him is not only around gossip or crap, you know, just do prayers, light candles for him. Just that's the best thing that you can do for him right now. And if you really, truly care about him, I think that's the way to go. Um, okay. Just, you know, try to make sure people are being good to each other that's a bit important i'm sort of tired of all this insanity and i would not have gone to this point if i was not pushed here all right okay as for Sarah, Ma max sorry max he's immortal max is immortal he, just, he can't die so he's he'll be fine all right that's lovely and excellent. Uh, all right. Thank you so much, Sarah Adams, for coming on the show. Uh, like I said, you're thank invited you, back Terry. in the future. And thank you, everyone, for being in the chat, for have, uh, for acting decently in the chat for change. Uh, I think in the most cases, most of the people were quite uh, listening with care and discretion. And, uh, that is amazing. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> I love you. Thank you. <laughs> And, uh, and and thank you again for, for watching. And please do get put this out around for, so that the mainstream media, media that may be steering the wrong information out there is corrected on, on most of these points and realizes how complex this is. It is a murder mystery and it has not completely been revealed at this time. Well, so it's the thing that we're trying now trying to put out, you know, we're, trying to get out like people can be killed through black magic through energy people don't realize this and right. you know mainstream it's hard for mainstream to understand this they were really amazing with trying to understand it and but it's really hard for them but i know that people in this area know that it's very possible for people to just drop dead like that and i've seen it happen and people try to do it to me basically i've got to go in astral to take out black magic that's done on me or voodoo stuff i just go take out the pins black magic that they do, I mean, put it into them. So basically, he's not going to do that to me. Um, but anyhow, that's what we're trying to get out that, you know, there are apps, you know, the top things in spying or psyops or stuff like that, or in murder is actually people killing other people through energy or through the mind or stuff like that. This is the top things. And that's what I'm saying. That's how Max, I believe, was also very heavily targeted. Okay, yes. Uh, I'm very I'm sure that that was definitely part of it. Okay, so thank you again and everyone. Thanks for listening uh, Have a great night. Okay Thank you, Carrie. Carrie. I'm signing out. I'm going to sleep. Okay. All right. Take care. Bye-bye
doing with regard to Stonehenge. Um, and it's quite late in the UK, as you can appreciate. So I think um, it looks like Miles is just joining us now. So hold on one second. Hi, Miles. Hello, how are you doing? Very well. Uh, I've got, I am already live. So what I'm going to do is put, okay. put you on the screen. I don't know if you have video. If you do, that do would be. I do have video. I'm probably wearing two sets of headphones right now. <laughs> okay. I've got one set for this thing and the other set for, I suppose I better turn some light on here because it's uh, almost, uh, anyway, okay. All right. Well, right now you are, uh, your, your picture on your um, Skype, I guess it's, it says energy. <laughs> and, uh, and that's what we're seeing. That's what my audience is seeing. Uh, this is Miles Johnston. He is a well-known uh, British broadcaster actually, and uh, a reporter, investigator. And he also is the person who puts on uh, the, uh, well, it's, it's yearly, actually several times during, it, during the year a what we what he calls the basis conferences and i have been uh in attendance as well as spoken at several of those conferences um uh, they are wonderful conferences I, I highly recommend them and it's great miles to have you here uh it's absolutely fantastic as well and and this is a very important time uh for investigating and for getting the truth out about the death of Max Spears. Uh, so I, I appreciate that it's quite late where you are. I hope everyone will appreciate that that uh, we are keeping you up late uh, in order to get, in essence, what is breaking news about Max's mother coming forward. I know you've been in touch with her, so I wanted you to- Okay, Perry, the situation is that since the day that I was at your conference, and I got the, uh, okay, it's coming up to uh, 2.23 in the morning. There's a possibility I'll have a bookings clash. Uh, but the bottom, the, I'm sorry, I'm having to wear headphones here. <clears throat> so I've always been in consultation with Vanessa on this. Now, Vanessa is uh, Kerry's mother. Uh, um, wait, mother. not, not sorry, my mother. Forgive, me, forgive <laughs> me for a couple of slips here because it's just been flat out. Uh, I've probably the most important thing. Okay, right, guys. We live in a little bubble called the conspiracy movement, and we think we're very important. And we probably are. And Kerry, you're very important, and I'm very important. But what I did today was I'm an ex BBC employee. I was fired. Oh, God, it's so painful. I have to put some mockery into this because it's too serious. I was fired by the BBC. Uh, I was rehired by the BBC to close down BBC Manchester. Now that's because they're having sort of some kind of poetic games with me a couple of years ago. That what happened was that the BBC moved from London. They moved a lot of the programs from London to a place called Salford. Now Salford's important because it's the home of Manchester uh, United. Um, they gave me the opportunity to me metaphorically close down and shut down BBC Manchester, the entire northern region of the BBC. Now we all know what sort of games these people play. So here am I, I'm the last person on shift to actually shut down the BBC. Right in Manchester, that's the whole north region of the BBC. They also put me uh, as a bit of a laugh on uh, the night of the celebration, or not the celebration of the of 9/11. Technically, I could have put. Uh, and I believe that island was Crete, but I need to get some uh, some validation of that from Miles Johnston. So as soon as we can get him on the show, uh, we're waiting here for him to show up. Um, we have invited Max's mother, Vanessa, to come on the show to report in more extensive detail 
what she believes might have happened to her son. I have some other back channel information uh, that I may or may not be able to report here. And um, we'll see. I have put a call into another party who is knowledgeable about the occult background to this possible hit on Max Spears. And it is important to understand that we've got um, a lot of black magicians working behind the scenes. They were uh, intimidating Max. Max was drugged. There is a film on the internet, on YouTube, I believe it's still there, by the filmmaker again, who had been in direct touch with the household when these things were happening. And this is again around July 17th, uh, just lately, this last July. This is, of course, uh, actually, I think that makes it three months later, um, you know, August, September, October. Um, and we're just about on the 17th, if I have to actually look at the date. Yes, it's very strange. This is another occult synchronicity, no doubt, that all of this is breaking today, exactly three months after the fact. It is at least something that the mainstream press is picking up on it. Uh, they are reporting it wrong. They have many of their details wrong. Some, one might say, purposely wrong. They quote me without attributing the quote to me. I'm being quoted in almost every article. What they're calling me is a Project Camelot blogger. Not sure how they got the quote without going to my website and or watching my broadcast. So clearly my name was in evidence there. Um, when you quote someone in a news article, generally you try to use their name. And this is a part of a cover up. And so this is not ego. This is about how the mainstream press deals with trying to cover up uh, people that are making a difference uh, by misquoting them and or by not using their names. I've had this happen to me before with Veterans Today, for example. And I was actually told behind the scenes that Veterans Today um, have been told to take my name off an article that they published because they were not allowed to put my name uh, out there in public. This is all about uh, keeping information away from the people. So uh, it is good that they did quote me accurately However, it's not, it would be nice if they used my name. The Guardian did so. That's very good. At this point, again, what we're reporting is Max Spears' mother having come forward to report that he sent her a text right before he died saying, uh, in essence, and I'm paraphrasing, your boy is in trouble. If I die, please investigate. So that is what his mother is now doing. She is... Uh, is, is going public and uh, this is, is, is very good news for us and um, very good news for Max Spears and all the people that care so deeply about him. Uh, he was a uh, super soldier as we call them. He was interviewed by me initially uh, alongside Michael Prince at the super soldier conference in California back in 2013. After that, he apparently went off on his own and started uh, reporting information about the UFO scene, about uh, conspiracies, about information that he had come across in his life and doing a very good job of it, actually. So, uh, so he, his death was a great loss to the community and it has been completely ignored. Loose change on a DVD and networked it to the entire northern region of Great Britain. That would have been a very nice thing to do, but it would have been very, very naughty. I didn't do that, but they put me in that position. This afternoon, I recorded, this is very important, folks, in the scale of um, what's allowed, what is vetted, uh, if, if guys could understand that Jimmy Savile, the pedophile, the guy who got the children for the elite 
was the prime face on BBC popular music on top of the pops from the dead of one until it closed. This is something that was sanctioned at the highest level. And he was sat in the chair with a, um, and trying to get people's idea of what's sanctioned, what is allowed, what is allowed to go on broadcast television on the BBC. Okay. He had a jacket on, which had lots of bits of newspaper clippings and things like that. Now, what he had was in words and letters, the date on his left breast of the time when after his death, the BBC would announce an inquiry into what went on with Jimmy Savile. This is shocking and terrible. So about a year and a half before Jimmy Savile actually died, he mocked everybody by saying, that's when you're going to do an inquiry about me because I'm such a terrible person. He was laughing at us, knowing he was going to die or be dead. And he would, after his death, the BBC would then announce an inquiry, which means the BBC was announcing the play. Can you follow me here? Yes, ab absolutely. What they're basically doing is saying they know all about him. They allowed him to operate under their banner for God knows how many years. 40 odd years. Okay. Uh, and basically this is a, a pedophile ring. So this is what the BBC has been affiliated with. Now you were just interviewed, were you not, on BBC radio? Was that? This is exactly the point. This is exactly the point. Right. I go into BBC Wiltshire, which is, I'm in uh, Devizes, I'm in Wiltshire. It's uh, about 100 miles from, Semp from London. And I'm an ex-BBC employee. I have been fired because I put on, well, I sort of sort of sneaked on a 1.2 million watt FM pirate radio signal whilst I was sort of like still working with the BBC. You know, like you don't sort of do that sort of thing. It's like you don't do that. You get a thing called be fired. The pain, Kerry, that I had to go through to do this sacrifice. I'm so okay, I, you know, and I don't mean to rush you, but people are going to be very anxious to talk about today. Talk right. about what happened. Yes, okay. What I did today was a straightforward, simple hello. Um, they called me and I, and okay, right, can you do something about Max Spears? It's all over the Daily Telegraph. Now, it's very important that the Daily Telegraph and they reported with the Daily Telegraph. Daily Telegraph is one of the premier broadsheet elite, absolutely accurate newspapers you can get in print journalism. And they deliberately got dates wrong here. Now, people are going to have to look at these dates. They're going to have to look at exactly what was said here. Because um, uh, Max went there in April. They deliberately confused my conference in at the end of July with the actual conference he attended in April. So uh, they even uh, on Since the date of his death, which is in around, um, I don't have the exact date in front of me, but I believe it's around July 17th. So um, I'd have to see a calendar to get uh, all the details. This has all happened very recently um, in the last few hours that I was made aware of this breaking news and I am now going live with this broadcast and we have invited um, actually more than one person. We did invite Vanessa to come on the news uh, on this show and uh, we invited Miles Johnston. We are waiting for him to join us and uh, we will go live as soon as he is able to do so. In the meantime, I can tell you that uh, there is a as I said, a, a film of Max uh, two days, I believe, on the Friday. I think he died on, well, I became aware of his death. I think it was on a Sunday. I was at my conference in London, 
and we were uh, we had just closed down for the evening. Miles Johnston received a text and or a phone call. At that time, he was riding a train going home from having spoken at my conference, and he quickly texted me to make me aware of what had happened. I actually didn't even believe it at first uh, because, of course, Max Spears being so young and I was not aware of a reason for taking him out for people, um, what I would call the usual suspects, wanting to kill him, but apparently there was reasons. Um, immediately, we started to investigate. Um, Miles was in touch with Monica and some another party at the house, I believe. I, as I say, got in touch about a day or two later with the filmmaker who shot the last video of Max before he died. Um, in that video, you can see that he was actually um, drugged and he was having a very hard time with it. Um, what he was drugged with, I don't know. Uh, I do know he was in essence going in and out of consciousness and he went uh, notably at one point out apparently in the backyard to jump on a trampoline to try to get his head clear. That was one thing that went on. Uh, there was, was actually more than one interview right before he died uh, because he had just returned from a trip in which he had, um, had, had some interesting experiences and there was actually a broadcast live from that island um, and I believe Monica was in attendance with Max, traveling with him, um, and so on. Now, I have been offered an interview with uh, someone who is associated with Max, but that person had um, what we call conditions, and I don't operate that way. Um, I don't operate under conditions that have to do with, um, you know, barring me from interviewing other people or things that I don't feel are um, on the up and up and so on. So I denied that. Um, I actually refused that interview. Um, I encouraged that person basically to go forward on their own. I don't think they have, but I could be mistaken as I don't see everything on YouTube. And so I don't necessarily know what happened with all of that. But I can tell you there are plenty of people relatively close to Max who uh, do know things about what was going on. I have had, even recently, a behind the scenes report about a certain black magician who's working um, within the alternative community at this time and may have played a role in, this, in his death. Uh, and at this time, um, I won't be naming names, but uh, I think if you do some investigation, you're gonna know who exactly who I'm talking about. So this is what we've got going on. Uh, the reason I'm doing this broadcast now and the reason I've, I've contacted uh, Miles, who just got off BBC radio, from what I understand, um, and also another broadcast, I think, that he was... Project Camelot. Hi, everyone. This is Carrie Cassidy from Project Camelot, and we're going to go live just shortly here, actually and be talking to Miles Johnston in the UK, who is being interviewed in respect to the new breaking news from Max Spears' mother, uh, reporting that he texted her right before he died that he felt he might die, uh, might be killed, and that she should investigate. She's gone on the, uh, the news, and this is getting picked up by all the major news outlets. So this is now mainstream and uh, it's very important information because it does substantiate what Project Camelot had reported. When he died, I was already, uh, I did went live with Miles, if you remember, uh, because actually his death happened during one of my conferences and Miles was speaking. He was in direct touch with the woman uh, Monica, who is a journalist, uh, a Polish journalist in Poland, who uh, I guess Max Spears was staying at her mansion. Uh, she owns several magazines, I'm told, and uh, he died there on her couch. 
and this was around July uh, 17th, I believe. Uh, we heard about it that night because Miles Johnson was in direct touch again with her and with a couple of the people that were in, um, in attendance at the house. So we're gonna have Miles join us just shortly. Uh, I have a lot of details about the latest news articles and links to them in case you haven't been able to uh, pick up these inform you know, various uh, news outlets. Huffington Post, um, I've got a whole long list of actual news outlets that are putting all of this out. The Huffington Post, the Mirror, the Metro, the Guardian, the Inquisitor, the Express, the Sun, the Independent, Daily Mail, and the Telegraph, and the Guardian. And thank you to the Guardian for actually putting my name on my quote instead of calling me uh, the K Project Camelot blogger, which was a <laughs> rather a strange title, wondering why they actually weren't able to see who runs Project Camelot. And if they're quoting me, they should be quoting me directly. So this is what's going on. Uh, like I said, we're going to go live very shortly with uh, Miles Johnston and put this information out there. A lot of the articles apparently are getting the information wrong. Miles Johnston and I were investigating right after the death. And, uh, and this is important. Uh, contrary to, to what some... Um, sort of, uh, I guess, demented individuals are saying, this is not about self-promotion. This is about getting the truth out. And it's so vital that alternative journalists like myself and Miles Johnston, who have the truth, who are uh, investigating. I spoke to a filmmaker who was in direct touch during the time when, my, um, when Max was dying uh, with the household and uh, we had an extensive and long conversation just after uh, Max's death. I know a number of things that have been not, re not been released to the press. And I can say that uh, this information from his mother is simply substantiating what I said uh, going out on a limb right after Max died based on my investigation and conversations with for one thing, the filmmaker who was, again, in direct touch with one party who has not been reported um, by name, but who was in attendance at the house when Max died and witnessed this. Uh, I don't know what's going on with Monica, who owns the house uh, where Max died and who had traveled just prior to that uh, with Max to an island 